You're listening to Kate of Gaia on Critical Mass Radio. The game is up. Now, it's our turn. And good evening. Welcome to Outside the Box. Yours truly, Kate of Gaia here on uh, Katie Bitch Rant Saturday night. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, let me see. I just got to ask someone a quick question, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, doo, doo, doo. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, just one sec. Sorry, guys. Just uh, literally just got off the road uh, maybe about 15 minutes ago. Uh, a little over uh, three hours uh, in between destinations. So... Uh, Plenty of Bill Donahue listened to, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it just kept rotating through uh, a few of the videos. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, where do I want to go tonight? Boy, i got to tell you, it's... Uh, uh, oh, okay, we are going to have uh, have some fun tonight. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Just say when. Let me see. Just say when. There we go. <sighs> Where do I want to begin? You know, we got talking a bit about contracts and what a, what a contract is, and and it's not a piece of paper, and it's certainly not a piece of paper with uh, um, words and a signature on it, and even further, it's not a piece of paper um, that has blood on it. And it those are manifestations of the physical. So I want to try to keep backing people up into the spiritual realms of what a contract is. And the contracts, all contracts begin and end in your own mind. And, uh, oops, that didn't go where I wanted it to go. No problem. Just, uh, I hate when Skype does that. Puts it up into your search for people. <laughs> no, I didn't think there was anyone. Uh, no problem, just say when uh, in Skype. Yeah, so getting back to what a contract is and what a contract isn't. It's as simple as this. And I want to really keep it simple. Um, a lot of these simplistic ideas are tough for the left brain to get you know, wrapped around uh, because your ego, left brain, cane mind, the canine, the dog mind, uh, absolutely insists that it has to be more complicated, more detailed, more thought than just... What is? And I'll tell you what is. A contract is anything and everything that you agree with. I'll let that sink in. So start thinking about all the different contracts you have, and how many you've actually accumulated over the span of a lifetime. And you might start to get an idea of the amount of work that you have to do in order to dispel all of these contracts. But uh, that's even easy because you do that with a thought as well. And it's as simple as, you know, your computer is a prime example of it. When things aren't working quite well with you know, you, enough with your computer, it slows down, it's bogged down. Well, what do you do? Well, first off, you clean out all the garbage programs that you're not using, not needing longer and then of course you defrag <laughs> there's that fractal thing right fragmented fra fragment uh, <sighs> frag mind Can that tell you something right and let, let's just do the analogy the allegory of what a computer is you know when it starts clogging up and working slowly your processors bogged down that's because there's too much information trying to get processed at the same time when it's as simple as, you know, getting rid of all that crap and making the decision. How many times have you sat at your computer looking at all the things you have and you're wondering whether you should keep it, whether you should delete it, whether you should do this, that, and the other? Well, here, I'll make it easy for you. Uh, there's things called external hard drives. Uh, I call it the Akashic. And all of those things, you know, it's got a lot more memory than, than what you have in your onboard computer, so would it not make a lot of sense just to upload, make the agreement with yourself to upload all the crap that you do not need that's continuously clogging up your processors, um, and just store it? I mean, if essentially that's kind of what I do. When I don't need something in the, in the forefront, I just, okay, I don't need that there, so I just push everything from left brain out, and I just work with now. And... 
if you can look at this now concept a little differently, try this one on. When you are in the moment of now, life is going past you like a movie. Not the other way around. <laughs> you know, you're not traveling through time, time is traveling through you. And what you're doing in, in your position, regardless of where you are on this planet, what you're seeing in your reality is the illusion of time passing you by. Well, the simple truth is, you are the now moment observing things as the game rolls past you. But you're always in the now. You're always observing now. So you can go to any point of your movie to recall. So it's as simple as making the choice. Can you make the choice to get rid of the crap that you don't need, finally decide that you need to sacrifice the 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 lamb that's your left mind on the altar of fire and just get rid of it you see the left the left mind uh, the carnal mind is the natural side of you that needs to be sacrificed because only when you sacrifice the carnal the natural the left the uh, the physical attributes and you have to sacrifice these things this is where you step aside and you put all of that crap onto the altar to be consumed in the fire. The fire is truth. So it's very, very simple. And I'm hoping that someone is ready. Ah, yes, he is. Okay, so let me just... Ah, Skype. Pain in the ass. Okay, let me see. Let me just get up to the call. And uh, I think this is going to be a, a good conversation for myself and this wonderful individual that I'm going to be adding right now. Because a lot of it uh, that I'm going to talk about tonight, especially with regards to contracts, involves sacrificing uh, what you deem to be your real mind. No, that's the mind you must get rid of. And all too often I find too many people still hanging around in the left brain trying to figure something out from a physical perspective. All of the things that we deal in in the physical are merely the effect of our causal spiritual. Now, th this is my perspective on it. I'm just going to share how I see things and see if it resonates, see if something sits, and then, you know, we can talk about it because, you know, I don't... Actually, I do know everything. I've just forgot a lot of shit like the rest of us, okay? So, uh, oh, yeah, we got you. Santo, how are you? Great, Kate. Thank you. Yourself? Oh, good, good. Great to have you. Mm -hmm. I've been listening in the background and... Uh, Great subject, contracts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the spiritual level, and, and I, I kind of wanted to tie in this whole astrotheology, left brain, um, and also the Bible, right? Because uh, this whole idea of, of, of sacrificing the lamb, that's in order to find the spring, you must sacrifice the lamb. Now, I, I correlate the lamb with, with the left brain or the left mind, that that which is carnal, that must be sacrificed in order. Um, right, let's go back to Abel. Why did God smile at Abel? Because Abel was bringing the sheep or the thoughts. She was being the good shepherd. She was bringing those carnal thoughts to be sacrificed. And, Spot on. And then, yep. and then Cain, he's, he's all wrapped up in, look what I can do, look what I can do, look what I can be, brings all of the, the fruits of the earth. And, and although, you know, when you stop and think about it in the, in the physical sense, it's a great thing. However, <laughs> it's all physical. It's all left brain. It's all menial work. It's not a spiritual thing. So you must be the good shepherd. And this is, for me, the allegory of the shepherd is the it, that's you paying heed to those thoughts, the sheep, and you bring those sheep to the right side to be sacrificed. And I want to try to correlate that in with uh, you know this, um, the lamb of Aries being... Uh, we talked about ash, right? <laughs> you must sacrifice it in the fire uh, to become ash. Now, isn't it interesting that the French letter H is pronounced ash, and the, le the capital letter H in the Greek alphabet is ita, or E-T-A, which to me is the mirror of yang with love and the mirror of yin, right? That's e in the cross. So... You've got the yin-yang on each side of the cross. It's also the seventh letter in the Greek alphabet, which, of course, um, what number would would be God's favorite, our favorite number? 
So. Oh, that'd be set. Yeah, you see. So, uh, and there's where we get the concept or the concept. We in, in English we pronounce the p in the set, <laughs> it, like September. Uh, in French, set is sevens. It's amazing when you start to really see all of the syncretism that that happens with. Everything you can connect everything to everything to everything. Now there we went from Ash to the letter H to the Greek alphabet, and then we're back to the God number seven. And isn't isn't that a coincidence? Little one, <laughs> not. So uh, yeah, let's talk about contracts from an ethereal perspective tonight, shall we? Yes, please. All right. So if you and I get into an agreement, let's say uh, you have you have an idea and you share it with me. And it resonates with me. And I go, oh, that's a great idea. And as soon as I can fully resonate with the idea that you've shared, guess what happens? It manifests. You see, an idea has no power until it has an agreement. That is an intention. Right? We as creators are simply the voids of creation. It is outside of us. This is how I see it. It's what happens outside of us that grants that the power. This is why the system has been so powerful in controlling the masses, because it puts things out there, you know, uh, let's call it Hollywood, let's call it sports, let's call it politics, religion, all of these crazy distractions that, you know, you don't want to disagree with anybody because you don't want to, you know, be outside like the black sheep, so to speak, right? You want to be fitting in with everybody, and that's what I call, that's where your ship is docked permanently. It's called peer pressure. Uh, that's, you know, that's the pressure holding your ship to the pier, uh, which uh, your ship is your mind. So your mind is docked, and you're just going to be sitting in, in, in dock or at the pier with all the rest of the peers. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to be judged by my peers because that means they're stopped too. So I'll uh, just carry on from there. But you see, you see how the language itself all comes right back into these very same concepts. All the words that that I break down, everything circles back on itself. It's crazy, beautiful, but crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, you know, um, you spoke about um, sacrificing the lamb, uh, and of course, the lamb is in Aries, <clears throat> the cerebran, and um, there's another constellation called Ara, which means altar of sacrifice in Sagittarius, no less, because Sagittarius is the last fire sign for the year. year starts in Aries with fire and pretty much ends in the ninth sign of fire, the ninth sign Sagittarius, which is fire. And there is a, an altar there called Ara in the southern skies, one of the, the three southern well, the, the deacons of um, Sagittarius, the other being Draco and Lyra. And all of those uh, constellations in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus, the Son, is betrayed by, well, there was Peter in the Garden too, um, Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, but there was also the devil, Draco, and Draco has the word Ra in it. Ara has the word Ra in it, which harks back to Ares, the father of the fire signs, where the sacrificial lamb gets sacrificed, actually, because that's the last quadrant where fire exists along the ecliptic, because Capricorn, Earth, Aquarius, Air, and Pisces, Water, is the winter quadrant where there is no fire. The fire is extinguished, and the sacrificial lamb... Ares is sacrificed on Ara and there is an aroma, not the aroma as in Amore Roma Mia, no, a sacrificial lamb aroma. <clears throat> this is why God loves the smell of burning rams, because of its aroma. And um, the other... Uh, Deacon is Lyra, Lyra, the uh, harp of Apollo, of Hermes. So, um, yeah, that's the Garden of Gethsemane, the sacrifice, the betrayal, the altar. The sun, the lamb, the Yaram, which is the original word for year, 
Jar Ram, go figure. Wish I knew that when I was a Jehovah's Witness. Would have been nice uh, knocking on the doors. Ah, my God's a Ram. Boy, <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine how many that. conversations I'd have. <laughs> and yet it is, and yet it is, because the Ram is Agnes, Ignis, and everything that is igneous, the fourth element, not the fifth, the one you know that you have to uh, go through to get to the fifth. You cannot go to the Father except through me, Jesus, the Lamb of God, Agnes, the uh, fire of salvation, which purges us and prepares us for the uh, Empyrean. Anyway, sorry to waffle on like that, but look, you said um, it goes round and round in circles. I can go round and round in circles with this stuff. It just doesn't end. And that's all just from uh, listening to you about contracts. Um, so... You know, there's plenty of pedophile priests out there that can uh, churn out some some um, some uh, sermons for you if you want to go down to the Catholic pedophile church or the Jehovah's <laughs> Witness pedophile church. Take your pick. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, rest assured, <laughs> rest assured that the contributions are actually going into the uh, <laughs> coffers of the Rockefeller coffer family, Rockefeller, who uh, actually fund the Jehovah's Witness uh, Watchtower, Watch Out Tower, and Bible Track Society Incorporated. Oh yeah, you got to notice that word on the end there. <laughs> it kind of tells you a lot of stuff. Conjures up an image or two. No wonder there's a bunch of pedophiles in there. Check out uh, silentlambs.org. Over to you, Kate. Okay, well let's look at core, poor, eight, okay? Core, body, poor, French, four, eight, English to eat, body for to eat. Yeah, okay, that's a, that works. I mean, it, you can take any one of these uh, words that we use and just bend it around and see all sorts of hidden hidden darkness contained within each one of them. I, it was very interesting today. Uh, I went and had a, had a coffee with Vicky and... Uh, one of the places uh, that's there we uh, went into and I was talking with uh, with a lady in there and I said isn't it interesting that everyone is out here you know supposedly celebrating Christmas and the the birth of Jesus which is actually uh, this is the crucifixion uh, the birth doesn't happen until what is celebrated as the crucifixion in uh, in the spring in Aries right so it, you know here's religion you want to talk about doing it backwards you know, because what we're dealing with here, maybe that would be a, a a good thing if I could get you to just give a give an outline of that, because uh, I, I, this does fall into the contracts thing. Because if we are in contract with uh, Christmas as it is being sold to us, what we're doing is uh, <laughs> agreeing with being completely out of time here, uh, because we're dealing right now coming up with the winter solstice on the twenty first with the crucifixion, are we not? <coughs> yep. Yep. Okay, let's do that. And the month leading up to it is Sagittarius, the Garden of Gethsemane. The sun's on the ecliptic and he's going through Lyra, Ara and Draco. Ra, Ra, Ra. Um, when you consult my show I did with you the other day, the Holy Alphabet Part 2, you will see that the letter R is right there, along with the letter S, the serpent, for Sagittarius. And the T is right on the last day, the 21st of December, and it stands for, guess who, none other than Tammuz. <laughs> kind of cute, that. And by the way, the letter R is 6 plus 6 plus 6, the 18th letter in the alphabet, the English alphabet, which makes it 6, 6, 6, three times in the constellation of Sagittarius, and that little uh, centaur, he's a happy centaur, Jove, with his thunderbolt. He actually uh, sends that and uh, pierces the heel of our Lord and Saviour Christ Jesus, or Achilles, or any other hero that gets it in the foot on the 21st of December. Tammuz did. That's why they gave him the day of St. Tammuz, St. Thomas the Doubter. See, he doubted. He wanted to see the Lord, but the Lord was, on the 21st of December, he was kind of shy, you know, he's not very bright in the winter. So, um, Tammuz, 
gets to have that day, the solstice, the 21st, the shortest day of the year. And uh, so here we've got the Draco, the devil there, and Saturnalia begins right there in, in the third deacon of Sagittarius, uh, which is, goes from the um, 10th to the 21st of uh, December. Draco. Yeah, I will bruise you on the head, he will bruise you on the heel. Um, and vice versa. And so um, what you've got there is the whole scenario of the sun. See, this is beautiful in the Gospels, the way they do this, you know. The Gospels are beautiful, really. Um, and they explain this, how the Lord is betrayed as he goes through this uh, last deacon. And, um, and <clears throat> incidentally, uh, guess what happens there on the 17th of December? Hmm, the Saturnalia begins, because in four days' time, Capricorn, ruled by Satan, the devil, uh, gets to rule in the winter. The enemy of his brother Horus, who rules in the summer. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And so, um, <clears throat> there it is. And so, this is why... It, Jesus is always full grown before the, the solstices and the equinoxes. It's the sun. And then he's killed and resurrects or is born three days after. Th this happens in December. This happens in uh, March. It happens every time the sun crosses over. And uh, this is what our good friend Plutarch has to say about this. Great subject that we're on, actually, because we're coming to the solstice, and uh, I'm going to well. be giving <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be giving these shows as Christmas gifts to uh, all the beautiful people in the world, and and also the pedophiles at the other end, and uh, bring them um, yeah, bring them some glad tidings. I'm I'm not partial, you know. I want this to go to Chief Pedophile Pepe uh, Orsini, uh, the Grey Pope in Rome, and um, it's a gift for him too. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, this, yeah, Merry Crucifixion. <laughs> yeah, Merry Crucifixion. Plutarch in Moralia, Isis and Osiris. You gotta read that book. Plutarch is the hero of the first century. He lived around the footprint of uh, another saviour. Uh, didn't recognise him though. This is one of the biggest, startling, most critical evidences used by every thinker in history that Plutarch didn't know who the hell and he was talking about Jesus in all of his stuff in, in particular um, the abs abstinence of the oracles yeah check that book um, I think I got that right the name but um, the uh, because he was saying that the oracles have stopped speaking he was an oracle he was the oracle of Delphi Plutarch the Great wrote 84 books. Jesus didn't write any. Oh, there's a few stories about him and what he supposedly said. That's called hearsay. <laughs> Funny about that. Uh, anyway, on um, 65, uh, chapter 65 of that book, Isis and Cyrus, it's a must read for people who want to really see the true religion of Isis, magnetism. It is the ultimate hermetic work. And Plutarch should be inserted as the fifth P in the line of um, uh, Pythagoras, um, Plato, insert Plutarch, then go Plotinus. Um, Pythagoras? Uh, Pythagoras, sorry, we missed him. Go back. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. Anyway, Plutarch should be inserted in there. He must be. He cannot be taken out of that line of great, great, great ones. Uh, Pythagoras, Plato, Plutarch, Plotinus, Porphyry, and, and Proclus. All right, six. <laughs> okay. And, and that ends with Iamblichus. Remember that. Remember those seven. And throw in Orpheus and Hermes at the top, <laughs> the Egyptian ones. Okay, the nine. Those nine. Those are it. And according to, you might find that uh, Marsilio Ficino agreed with that. Check out Marsilio Ficino's list and Firmicus Maternus, the astrologer's list. Pretty much the same ones I mentioned. 
Anyway, this is what he says. <clears throat> in this way, see, I'm bursting with so many things to share. I haven't just, I'm uh, just scratching too. the surface. Yeah, you too. I'm just huh? scratching the surface. <laughs> Yeah. I've been suffering from uh, severe overload, so I've been uploading as much as I can to get it out of my head and writing. So carry on about Plutarch. Yeah. In this way, we shall undertake to deal with the numerous and tiresome people, whether they be such as take pleasure in associating theological problems with the seasonal, seasonal changes in the surrounding atmosphere, or with the growth of the crops and seed times and ploughing, and those who say that Osiris is being buried at the time when the grain is sown and covered in the earth, and that he comes to life and reappears when plants begin to sprout. For this reason also, it it is said that Isis, when she perceived that she was pregnant, put upon herself an amulet on the sixth day of the month of Pharaoh. Now get that, that's Pharaoh is Pharaoh, P H A O, and then Phi, P H I. <laughs> Dig that name. That's the month. And uh, I think that's Aries. I'm going to check that. It doesn't no, sound It like... sounds all about creation there with. Uh... Mm -hmm. With the phi roll phi, right? Again, yeah. and look, and I, I do want to make one one mention of all the P's that all these names start with, which is the mirror of the Greek letter rho, which is spirit breath. And when you were saying uh, all the Ra names in uh, the deacons, uh, all of them are Ra or like rho. They're all spirit breath. It's just amazing. <laughs> it all connects. Yeah, three three R's in Sagittarius. Three deacons, Ra, 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 and Ra in uh, Hebrew is the word evil. In Egyptian, Ra is the sun god. In, Kald in Chaldea, it was reversed. It was Ur, Ur of Chaldea. That's where Abraham comes from. <laughs> anyway, continuing on. And about the time of the winter solstice, she gave birth to Harpocrates. Get that? That's Horus in another name. So we're talking about December, coming up soon, right? December the 21st he's talking about. He's, Plutarch is revealing that in the religion of Isis of antiquity, the winter solstice, she gave birth to Harpocrates. Now, Har is Horus. And if you'll find that in the word harmony sun and moon, Horus and the moon, harmony. When they get together, hmm, you're going to have a symphonic harmony. Anyway, continuing on, in perfect and per, uh, premature, amid the early flowers and shoots, for this reason they bring to him as an offering the first fruits of growing lentils. And the day of his birth they celebrate, now get this, after the spring equinox. Now, now, we just said that at the summer solstice, clearly Plutarch said at the summer solstice, she gave birth to Harpocrates, but they celebrate his birth, you know, with the hot cross buns at Easter, at the spring equinox, the Lamb of God. So there are two births here, clearly. It's the lamb, the sheep and the goats. I've ever said this. There are four Gospels. Two begin in Capricorn with a baby Jesus on the 25th of December. And they would be Matthew and Luke, replete with the genealogies that go back to a mother did, who didn't have sex and Joseph who had, didn't have anything to do with it anyway. Because it was an immaculate conception. Remind me to address immaculate conception. Will do. Because we are all immaculately conceived. Immaculate is light and consciousness. And we'll talk about that after this. Um, and, and the days of his birth, they celebrate after the spring equinox. When, <clears throat> when the people hear these things, they are satisfied with them and believe them, deducing the plausible explanation directly from what is obvious and familiar. And I have a, um, a picture of Isis and Serapis and their child Harpocrates in the Louvre Museum. Louvre Ra? El Ra Museum? Yeah, you guessed it. Muse Museum. Go on Muse and you can check it out. 
Punch in Google, Louvre Museum, Isis, Serapis, that's Israel, <laughs> and their child, Harpocrates. Now, why am I pointing this out? I mean, well, there he is, the son of God is Horus, Harpocrates, and Serapis is Osiris. And Serapis is the syncretic god of Alexandria. And it harks back to Sarah and Apis, the bull of April, Taurus. You see, the lamb, again, the lamb of God. And so, um, and so this is why you ask the question, why you know, is this uh, confusion about, oh, it's, well, Jesus is dying and born in December and dying and being resurrected, exalted in uh, Easter? Of course. Because this is the science of light, and you know, really, I have to say that you know, if you don't know this science, you're pretty much a dickhead. <laughs> That's only you can say, dickhead. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's true. I, no, I, I, I'm I, loving it. This is exactly hope, what needs to be heard. I hope I've offended some uh, premature um, uh, listener uh, or. Um, Entities that cannot grasp that everything is light and we oh. are immaculately conceived for this what? is how consciousness, spirit, embeds itself in matter and we are this animated creature which is so beautiful and exquisite and we don't give any credit to the light that caused it because we're a bunch of imbeciles. Well, yes, because you know religion teaches us that, well, for those that want to know about religion, all you need to do is attend the uh, uh, Our Lady of the Holy Ejaculate School, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's for all the dickheads. Sorry, I just you, you had me a dickhead. It's because it's so it's so right. They, I, I was listening to some Bill on the way down, and uh, uh, well, of course, as fate would have it, coincidence. You know, he was talking about system and uh, you know the church tyrants and how the whole the whole church. And you see, this is one of the reasons why I want to talk wanted to talk about contracts tonight. Because while we are in contract with this concept that Christmas uh is the um the birth of of the sun, it's well the sun is definitely reborn. Uh but for me the true beginning is, is Aries, the ram. That's uh where the spring comes in. So I just want I want people to understand that what we're dealing with here is the crucifixion, not the birth story, right? Yep, 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 exactly. Um, and um, you're, you're very, very spot on. I um, was going to uh, sort of address that because um, the uh, Christ, uh, the year begins there because naturally Aries is in the head and Capricorn is in the knees. And so, but Capricorn is at the at wave amplitude, you see, winter is opposite, it's winter. So, and the solstices produce this wave amplitude which gives, um, you know, space to, space to the uh, spatial temporal existence that we are in. Um, it's the wave, it's the, the secret of creation is in the wave. How can you miss this stuff? I mean, it's ridiculously, it's kindergarten anyway. I mean, we're not really, um, well, you, you don't want to sound like the left brain academics anyway, but they, you know, they, anything that comes from, vomits from their mouths is just to impress themselves and, you know, and numb the listeners. And rest assured, they are numbed. <laughs> They're pretty numb. <laughs> now, can I elaborate further? Because there's a tractate of a tra the tractate called Rosh Hashanah enlightens us a little bit more about this subject of Christmas and Easter. Can I continue? Oh, I'd be pissed if you didn't. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, so there's two great uh, first century Jewish scholars. There was um, Rabbi Joshua and Rabbi um, Eliza. And they had followers that, um, you know, one, uh, one followed Eliza that uh, had it that Tishri, um, Libra, our astrological sign of Libra, is where the world was created. And Rabbi Joshua says Nisan was where the world was created. So here we have further confusion. And I've enlightened 
um, the sub I've uh, shed light on this subject because all of the um, cardinal signs have this feature. They are beginning points. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> this is now grade one. No, I've upped, I've upped the ante and now we're in grade one. So I think we should be able to grasp this. So anyway, um, this is what he says in the tractate Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh is Resh, the letter R, which, by the way, has the value of uh, 200 in the Hebrew language, 18 in the English. Um, and there is a harmonic there. Yeah, there is. And the letter L is the 12th num uh, numbered letter in our alphabet and the number 30 Lamed the Lan in the Hebrew Saturn and Jupiter this is why you know uh, unenlightened people get confused who's L is it Jupiter or is it Saturn well it's it's both you know it's the light the Lamb of God there's always R and L everywhere you go even the Louvre Museum. Louis. Who's that? Luigi. That's the sun. All names are the sun. Anyway, look. I'm ranting now. So I'll get back to this. Um, in Nisan, the world was created. In Nisan, the patriarchs were born. On Passover, Isaac was born. Get that? Isaac, son of Abram, where, well, you know, instead of sacrificing him on the altar, God says, no. I'll send an angel down and stop him. Stop. Don't do that, Abraham. Look over there to the right. There's a ram for you to sacrifice. Good boy. On Nisan. And this happened on Nisan. Um, this is the equinox. So let me continue on. On the new year, Sarah, Rachel and Hannah. And um, I've got here in brackets... Agnes, because Agnes is the lamb, and it comes from Hannah, which is Anna, which is Anno, Anno Domini, the Lamb of God. Uh, so, and the name related in medieval and Elizabethan, Elizabethan times to Agnes through Anne, Anne, Anna, are derived from the Hebrew Hannah, God favoured me. Oh yeah, in Easter, that's for sure, the blossom. Uh, were visited on the year Joseph went from forth from prison on the year the, the on new year see they call it new year so on new year Joseph went forth from prison on new year the bondage of our ancestors ceased in Egypt of course because you've just been through the winter and it's spring now you dipshit and in Nisan they will be redeemed in time to come. Now that was Rabbi Joshua 2,000 years ago. But Rabbi Eliezer, by contrast, said in Tishri the world was created. In Tishri the patriarchs were born. In Tishri the patriarchs died. On Passover Isaac was born. On New Year Sarah, Rachel and Hannah were visited. On New Year Joseph went forth from prison. On New Year, the bondage of our ancestors in Egypt ceased. In Nisan, they were redeemed. And in Tishri, they will be redeemed in the time to come. Now, if you, if, you understand, if you really, really paid attention to that last little bit, that last sentence, in Nisan, they were redeemed. And in Tishri, they will be redeemed in the time to come. This is the second coming, the second covenant, the covenant of rest. Because the covenant of works begins in Nisan. Because you've got to work in the spring if you want to reap in Virgo before the judgment of Libra. And the sun then on the ecliptic goes through the Red Sea because the leaves of the trees have turned red and the harvest is red for harvesting. On the new year, the bondage of our ancestors ceased in Egypt. It is written in one place, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And it is written in another place, I removed his shoulder from the burden. In Nisan they were delivered, as scripture recounts. In Tishri they will be delivered in the time to come. This is learnt from the two occurrences of the word horn. Yeah, K 
Capricorn, the corn of cornucopia, abundance, and the unicorn in Cancer, opposite, the other solstice, the two portals, Cancer being the portal of men, according to Macrobius, the unicorn, the cornucopia of abundance, and Capricorn, the other corn, the horn, the shofar that was blown in Israel. Yeah, the ram's horn, too, in uh, Easter. Here, one more for Capricorn. Let's get phonics on it. Ka pri corn. So what you have is spirit, uh, ka, the embodiment of spirit, pre, before, abundance. That works. That's it. Yeah, I did that in Syncretism Part 1, The True Theology. Get the True Theology, <laughs> Syncretism Part one, on, part 1 on YouTube. I busted all that. Cabra is Abra. Cabra is the goat in Spanish. They speak Hebrew because they are the Iberian people. And so they tell it as it is. Cabra is Cabra Cadabra. And Abra... Abraham, the ram in Aries, is also Abra. And the scarab in Cancer, the other cardinal sign, is also Abra, Kadabra. And Libra is Librahim in Arabic, which is Abra, Kadabra. They are portals. And Abra, Kadabra means I create through speech. And the alphabet is speaking on, speaking on the ecliptic. Anyway, continuing on, it is written in one place, blow the horn on the new moon... And it is written in another place, In that day a great horn shall be blown. There are four new years. On the first of Nisan is the new year for kings and for festivals. On the first of Elul, that's El El twice. And by the way, El Elohim means lamb. Check out Ail. A-Y-I-L. And you will see that El Elohim is the lambs in heaven. Yeah. El is the new year for the tithe of cattle. So on the new on the first of Elul, turns out that's Virgo. A bit confusing that one, but anyway. And then he goes on, uh, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Simeon, however, place this on the first of Tishri. There you go. Those two rabbis corrected it. They went from they moved it from Virgo to Tishri. But they didn't really. It's misunderstanding because it's always idiots that are, are, are trying to um, explain this celestial phenomena because they don't know that everything occurs on the wave, the ecliptic. And um, my niece and I are working on a project to uh, bust the helix um, in the DNA. Um, Sonia, my niece, has come up with some astounding information that will blow your minds when she joins me on one of these shows. I was going to ask, when are, when are you going to get her in here? I'd love to have Sonia on with us. Yeah, we're going to talk about the pyrimidines and the purines, get the P-U-R, in the um, DNA and the um, ribonucleic acid and the DO, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. And we're going to talk about Mercury, the messenger, recording the DNA and unzipping it, etc. Oh, we've got a story to tell. Tell you, I've got... Uh, Got a few little goodies to share um, before I'm done with Rome. And uh, all for um, the ones who deserve it. Giordano, Bruno, um, Hypatia, put them first and um, remember these ones. Eh? So um, it, it's clear there that they agreed that there are four new years. And they said that on the 1st of Tishri is the new year for years for the release and jubilee years, for plantation and for tithe of vegetables. So this is, this is um, what needs to be really busted open, the liturgical year. And I've done a presentation, I think it's up on, online, I did it in um, Leicester in, uh, on my tour in the UK. It's called uh, The Holy Days. Check it out. And just we start in March, as always, as the two Gospels, John and um, Mark, does. Um, they start with a full grown Lamb of God who's coming to save the world. And John the Baptist introduces him um, in the first chapter, twice in the first chapter uh, of the Gospel, 
of John, the non-synoptic gospel, the Egyptian gospel, uh, where it, in, it uh, begins with "In the Word there was in the beginning there was God, there was um, God, and the Word was God, the Logos." Yeah, in verse twenty-nine, you just follow that down, and it says there, and there's John the Baptist says, "There's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world." The first verse of the most favourite of all the gospels. And turns out, I did say this on the other show, but the first three words in Genesis 1-1, Bareshit bara Elohim, each one of those contained the word ram in it, full-blown. Because bara is the ram, and bara in Bareshit, Bareshit to, um, and then, um, and then Elohim, Ayil is the Lamb of God. And then you get the first words of the Quran and every other surah, except for one, begin with these words. Bismillah, al-Rahman, al-Rahim. And pay attention to the man and him. Man and him. Al-Rahman, al-Rahim. And so, there you have six times the Lamb of God mentioned in the first words of the Quran, the book, the Qutb, the Quran, the book of the Ram. And that is six times. <clears throat> and in the Mahabharata, no, in the Rig Vita, the Rig Vita, the most famous of the four Vedas, which will be comparable to uh, <clears throat> John, it has in the first <coughs> surah, surah, like um, ra, uh, it has Agnes, the hero, the firstborn of Brahma, the ram, nine times. So there's the Hindus, there's the Jews and the Christians, and there's the Islamists. If Well, if they don't, cover three quarters of the globe so I wonder whether the other quarter worship the ram too I wonder whether they um, worship um, Israel too because I do I love L I love the letter L and everything that it illuminates along the ecliptic that it produces as abracadabra uh, magical light produces all this um Wonderful phenomena of the physical universe. Yeah, I'm a worshipper of El, and I worship Ra too, the evil one, his bad brother, radiating, radioactivity, um, uh, radio, Marconi's device, you know, Ra God, radius, the radius which comes from the point in the middle of the circle and attaches itself to the circumference, uh, the circle of L and um, the perimeter, the circle of Ptah, Jupiter, L, the electron, the element. And so, you know, it, there's, there's plenty of um, uh, wisdom and understanding in our theological, so-called theological uh, texts. And I mean, you just have to pay attention and uh, you just have to know the science of light. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And this is why uh, Jesus, the Son, says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. And there is so much putrid darkness and um, in the churches. And uh, that's the only thing that is evil in the universe. And um, Yamblichus, the great one that I mentioned before, of the nine great ones, who Julian, the emperor who restored the worship of the Son in uh, 363, was murdered by Christians, uh, whilst uh, in Persia defending the Roman Empire. Nonetheless, he was in the fiction, but he still understood the divine religion and restored it because his great-uncle Constantine, the prick, uh, brought um, literalism and Peter's Pence to planet Earth. Uh, but he tried to save mankind, at least, and bring Rome back to some, quarter, some kind of a republic. Anyway, died defending that. And he called Iamblichus the Divine One, second only to uh, Pythagoras and Plato. 
He says, since the ignorance of and deception about native divine natures is impiety and impurity, but a scientific knowledge of the gods is holy and beneficial, the ignorance of things honorable and beautiful will be darkness, but the knowledge of them will be light. And the former indeed will fill men with all evils through the want of erudition, education that is, left brain academic style, through audacity. But the latter will be the cause to them of every good. I wish you therefore to unfold to me the truth respecting these particulars. Anyway, he goes on. And by the way, that's... Um, I'm reading from Porphyry, excuse me. Uh, that's Porphyry uh, inquiring of Iamblichus um, the reason for his insisting that we must practice theurgy, which results in henosis merging with the God mind. And he insisted that this was the true path. This is the yoga of the West, theurgy. Rome has destroyed it. Rome has tried to stop... Uh, the um, you know, the wisdom of Iamblichus because he he um, expounded this in his works the uh, on the mysteries of the Egyptians the Chaldeans and the Assyrians for they belonged to a brighter age you see the Bronze Age and the uh, Silver Age and they knew this that um, only remerging with our consciousness from those ages which we call God is the only way that we will be identical with God and hence saved and he that is not identical with God is a fool and will suffer with perdition and will suffer what is uh, known as damnation and um, good luck to them for restoring their um, their conscious atoms that have been that have been with them up until this point we have incarnated as human beings for a reason and that is because we have come from the animal plant and mineral as the Jews teach in Torah and in and um in their um sud their um they've got Pradesh, uh Resh Midrash um Drash Midrash uh, I'm forgetting now but the four levels of wisdom they taught that from mineral to plant to animal, to human, the middle kingdom, one goes on to be the Jew, the Jew tree, with its roots in heaven, and then angelic, pre-angelic, archangelic, and all of those realms that Yamblichus explained, clearly for us, beyond the Demiurgus, who thinks he's the creator, Jehovah, and beyond that realm, to back to the Empyrean, and... Um, that is the uh, restoration of our, our godship. And we all we have to do is recognize the Christ within and find identity, be identical with God, the causal creator of this beautiful existence. And how simple can that be? And that is what's preventing all of those citizens that are legally defending their name from being saved. And they're still in the bondage rather than the salvage. No salt there. No, absolutely, and uh, that brings another note. Uh, I got to thank uh, uh, Sui Where is he? Uh, let me bring this up because it's a nice reminder. Uh, Sui Jeanry, um, Freeman, Dave, beautiful point, Dave. Um, just you sent me a note here. Hi, Kate. I'm listening to the 11th of December radio show on uh, CMR, and uh, a municipality is an office of a bishop in a metropolis uh, and see the ecclesiastical dictionary and that's something else too that we got to keep in mind when we're dealing uh with all things legal do not forget the church in there boys and girls you see because the the court is well court means church it's the same word court and church are the same word that's why they wear robes uh feigning the ecclesiastical so don't leave out the other half of it because both yeah, you know, I mean, the bishop. Both it, ministries. Yeah, you you can't, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it right, you hit you you hit both heads of the hydra, okay? 
um, and, and make no bones about it. Like any dealings and, and what I have been putting out in intention, especially with regards to Jorge Bergoglio. Now, I'm not, I'm not in agreement with Rome. I'm only in agreement with you've got to get your shit sorted. And I'm here to keep an eye on it. And by your actions, and I'm talking to Rome in London, and the bar and the church, uh, by your actions, you are known. And uh, I'm, not, I'm keeping a close eye on both sides of that coin, the head and tail of that dragon. I'm going to stand on the rim and be very mindful that uh, no one gets off the hook here. Because I'll tell you, uh, even though the mayor is the chief magistrate in, uh, or the chief justice within their jurisdiction, there is still the, the bishop. And again, thanks, Dave. Um, uh, one other point he made here, according to Exodus, he went, enters the matrix is mine, said the Lord. A matrix is the mother church, i.e. a cathedral or high church. And it's not a coincidence that the Church of Our Lady is a monster cathedral in the city of Guelph. Of course, that's the royal family name. Uh, going back to Victoria and her husband Albert, he was Albert of the House of Guelph. They just changed it to Hanover to sound more English. But make no mistake, all royal lineages are all German-based. They're all out of Germany. Okay? Um, and that's not a coincidence either. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to tie together here. But I, I, Oops, did we get bumped here? You still there, Santo? Did we get bumped? I think Santo might have got bumped there. One sec. Let me just double check. You there, Santo? Yeah. Yeah, did you yeah. get bumped? Yeah, you, we got bumped. You were at Monster Cathedral, okay? Yeah, okay. The Monster Cathedral called the Church of Our Lady. <laughs> Isn't that funny? In uh, in Guelph. Guelph, uh, I'm not sure if, if everyone heard this. I'll just repeat it. Guelph is the uh, true royal family name. It goes back to Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert. Isn't it funny <laughs> what a Prince Albert is in terms of dirty birdie? <laughs> yeah, you know, decorating your, you know, the the winky, if you will. Yeah, no coincidence there either. But uh, it was Albert from the House of Guelph in Germany. Uh, they they their Hanover is very close to Guelph, so they changed it to the House of Hanover. And it's not a coincidence either that there's a uh, Hanover, the town of Hanover is about the same distance away from the city of Guelph <laughs> here in Canada, in Ontario. I shit you not, okay? Uh, it's not a coincidence that my first flight instructor was from Hanover, and I was learning to fly in Guelph. Yeah, these are just, yeah, no, there's no, uh, no coincidences there. But, uh, and of course, Guelph is known as a royal city. Well, of course it is, because that's the original royal family name. Uh, they changed uh, the royal family name to Hanover because Guelph is too German, and all royal bloodlines emanate from Germany. They're all Germanic. Not a coincidence there either. You know, so a lot, a lot of the stuff yeah. goes very circular very quickly. It's from the Holy uh, Roman Empire, which was Germanic, started in with Charlemagne in 800 and ended in uh, the 1800s, basically. But um, yeah, nothing holy about it. It was the Second Reich, and then another German, uh, the the Rothschilds, basically uh, started the Third Reich. Um, so, and the Bushes are trying to bring on the Fourth Reich, but um, they'll fail. They already all have. Pedophiles do. Um, but interesting, you said um, two hands. Yeah, you're talking about the the bar and the, 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 the they wear robes. Yeah, they, they are ministries. They are ministries, and they are two hands of the same entity. Min Min would be Moon or Amun, the Ram Amun Ra. And if you're looking for Amun Ra in your body, check out your amino acids. Yeah, we're going to do that one too. Uh, the number 22 turns up there. I wonder why. Amino acids consist of uh, hydrogen, mm, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. Their atomic numbers would be 1, 6, 7 and 8 respectively. Hmm, adds up to 22. Funny about that. But, um, yeah, so what we need to do, Kate, is basically shed the light on these mofos so they go away. <laughs> and this is the light. It's the science of light. What's magical? Light turns out. Yeah, I was going to say what's magical is I can back up everything you're you're saying with phonics. <laughs> here, oh yeah, you, you want an example? Come at it from each direction. Well, here it is. Here's another example of Abel. Oh, okay, well, break the rules. Ab, 
in Latin means since. And L, what is L again? Oh, it, it's also um, Spanish for the, God, since God, Abel. Or you can be a bell, which means to war. Bell is uh, another word for war, which gives another phonics understanding of the Liber T Bell. Liber of money, T, love, love of money, Liber T. And Bell, war, the love of money war. And this is exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, and what is money? Money is the whore of Babylon. Come out of Babylon, <laughs> right? You can't make this shit up, yeah. Santo. You really can't, because no, it's no, all you, right there. You cannot. And you can get, you can come to uh, Bell at um, uh, various ways, you know, because you, there's there's not just the um, the one way, Bale and, and Bell. What was the other one you were saying? I forget now. Um, you just mentioned a really, really good one. Anyway. Oh, Bell? But, yeah, in, you can't. Bella means war? Oh, well, yeah. Well, there is. Is in in French is Bellier, so you can come at it. That's Ares. Ares, the god of war. Mars, the ram. So Bellier, Ari, Ariete in Italian, uh, battering ram. Yeah, ever seen kids coming out of their uh, mother's wombs, little babies? Yeah, with their battering rams. They charge out of there head first. Ares, Arian style. Uh, one Ares other... is always first. Look, you said Mark um, uh, for March, right? Because C-H can make a cut sound. So you've got Mark. I brought up the law of Mark. All right, now let's look at what, what that really involves. That's invoking the, the whole Aries ram taking control of yourself. Uh, battering ram indeed. Yeah. Hey, and uh, I haven't even finished with the the origins of the uh, the uh, origins of this confusion with um, the uh, December um, Passover thing. Well, carry on, carry so, on. So, yeah, oh yeah, because I want to bring this, this. This is beautiful information. This is historical, factual information that Rome has persecuted for sheer fear of syncretism and what it can do, because syncretism, the progenitor of synchronicity. Uh, things sinking in time, which they do through their calendars, is syncretism where you sync things in your head. They don't like that. They do not like that, for they divide and conquer. In the book, The Origins of the Liturgical Year, beautiful book, Thomas J. Talley, he um, says this thing, quoting Justin Martin, uh, Justin Martyr, and notice Ma, Mars hiding in a martyr. Yeah, because they fought for Mars. Um, Jesus, in another name, Jesus. Justin Martyr, in the second century, wrote, For the prophets have proclaimed two advents, parousias. Jehovah's Witnesses loved that word, I remember. They called that the second, um, the presence. They interpreted it as the presence of the Lord, rather than as the other Protestants interpreted it as the second coming of the Lord. But in effect, it is the essence of the Lord. The consciousness that one day would return is the parousia. Big word, parousia. Funny how it begins with paro again, the same words, abra. So the essence, the parousia, the two advents of his, the one that which is already past, when he came as a dishonoured and suffering man, but the second, when according to prophecy, he shall come from heaven with glory, accompanied by his angelic host. This is, this, this is Horus and Set, Ares and, and Libra, Nisan and Tishri going on here. I mean, how can you miss this? They bring it down to the literal, the morons. Uh, ma Marantha is the word parousia. You'll find hiding in Maranatha is Rana, the ram. The second coming, um, such ecclesias uh, eschato eschatological expectation, however, should not be taken for simple prediction of the future. Rather, it was a dimension of Jewish chronology and of the understanding of festival as the fulcrum of the year. 
The notion of a new year is always, in fact, more ambiguous than we suppose, and we recognise a number of points at which the year turns. The civil New Year's Day is January 1st now, although in England it was March 25th through the first half of the 18th century. So the English had it right, the Anglish, and um, they had it um, on the March 25th, the day between my birthday and my mother's birthday, 24th and 26th of March. My mother was named Palmina because she was born on a Sunday in March uh, 1942, and it was Palm Sunday, she, so she was called a little palm of Easter. Palmina, my Aryan mother. And um, her surname is Cherminara. Yeah, that's Ceres Amin, as in amino acids. Mina Ra. Ra. Israel in another name. And, you know, she was born in Borja, the Borja family, the founders of the Jesuits. So everywhere you turn, you can't, you can't, you can't run away from this. You can't miss it. And You cannot miss it. This is syncretism. And so, remember our Jewish rabbi friends that mentioned all those goodies that happened, all the patriarchs were born, everybody was born in Nisan or Tishri, but let's take it as Nisan because that's the true one. That's the head. Um, well, Noah's Ark sa safely sounds, uh, landed on Mount Ararat on Nisan 17. Aries, uh, the Hebrews entered Egypt on Nisan 17. Moses led the Israelites through the parting sea on Nisan 17. Woo! Shit, lots of goodies on this day um, uh, in Aries. Um, day of firstborn, Israel entered and ate the first, the fruits of the promised land. On Nisan 17. The walls of Jericho fall on Nisan 17. Oh, when the two spies go and collect Rahab and a red scarlet thread and save her. <laughs> Funny about that. Uh, what else happened on Nisan 17? Hezekiah cleans the temple 800 years after entering the Promised Land on Nisan 17. Esther saves the Jews. Hence, we have Purim on Nisan 17. Thanks, I, Esther. I need, Esther. I, I need to look up... Congratulations. I just need uh, need to look up something because Hercules, one of the labors of Hercules was to clean the stables. Yeah, Capricorn. Yeah, so it's got... Uh, just wondering if that's the same date. Yeah, it'll be Capricorn or Aries. You take your pick. These things are ambiguous for uh, deliberately. They are done for us to search and search and search and search out the mind of God. The first zodiac you'll, you'll probably ever find is in Genesis chapter 49, when Joseph blesses his 12 sons. You know, Ares is there as Gad. Gad is God. It's the dog. The Chinese put the dog in Ares, because where the ovus is, is the canine. Where the lamb is, is the wolf. And see, ovus is the ovaries. Check out what the ovaries look like, complete with ovus horns, which are called tubes. Yeah, they'd be the tubes, the sofas that the Jews blow, the ram's horn. Oh, and not to mention that the Messiah resurrects on night 17, three days after he gets crucified on the 21st of March. Uh, so, um, you know, it's great busting the, um, the, the, uh, the whole crock of shit that it is. Oh, Isaac's born on Nisan 15. John the Baptist, Nisan 15. The manna ends on Nisan 16, uh, 16. Funny how the manna, which comes from the claustrum in Aries, ends on Nisan 16 in Aries, where cereals, cerealia, is celebrated on April the 15th, and the Japanese celebrate it as uh, Sakura season. Ra, Sakura season. <laughs> Funny about that. And um, the Israelites crossed the Jordan on uh, 10th of Nisan, and Miriam's death on Miriam, Miram, Moses' sister, on Nisan 17. Uh, funny about all this. Funny, 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 me thinks. Uh, it's all coincidence. Look away. There's nothing to see here. Go back to your religions quickly. <laughs> it's hey, go back to your church. Um, 
Yeah, go to go to one of Benny Hinn's uh, smacked out on cocaine uh, 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 sermons and uh, check out his wife uh, smacked out on heroin, jumping around like a rabbit on the stage. And uh, check out all the other priests that have been caught um, uh, simulating masturbation uh, while they're praying to Jesus in front of thousands of church-going dickheads that go to church. <laughs> Funny about that one too. And check out, you know, how many priests have been caught with uh, secret cameras masturbating on, uh, you know, trains and in public places and in church. There's one doing it right there in the cathedral. And you can just, you know, check it out. Possibly just send it to um, people that you know ten times or more. Maybe get them to do something which is called wakey wakeys. And um, by the way, when the um, when they go to uh, when the Islamists go to Mount Moriah, that's Mount Marwa, and um, the original name was Al Haram, yeah, the mountain of the Ram, yeah, the mosque, that mosque there, yeah, that's on the mountain of the Ram. Where else would you put it? That's why Rome put its um, that. Um, you know, opposite the Tiber of over Ra Mars, the field of Mars in the Forum, Foro. So uh, we've got we've got ourselves a story of Ra. You see, um, and uh, Ra is the evil one six six six, the number eighteen, the eighteenth letter. L is the good one, the twelfth letter. Jupiter and his 12-year orbit. Yes, Jupiter Zeus. Jupiter Zeus and his 12 apostles. Would post happen to be the original or one of the names of a zodiacal sign, per chance? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, just maybe. Just to let you know, uh, we got Mike, Mike's in the call here, has been from the get-go, and uh, Aviad has joined in too, so I can just imagine uh, the conversation now. <laughs> Keep going. Stop. <laughs> it's only going to add, um, add more fuel to the fire, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Welcome, well, Aviad. Yeah, it's kind of welcome, uh, Mike. Yeah, it's kind of nice everybody. having someone that can that, that can actually speak <laughs> speak the language. Yeah, carry on, guys. I'm I'm enjoying this. Uh, me too. Love uh, it. Uh, Santos, uh, you're rocking today, as as every day. But you know, so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. Look. Uh, thank you. But. Uh, yeah, I'll, that's that's what I'm here for, you know, and um, <laughs> and, and and yourself because um, it, we've had we've had enough, haven't we, of the fools? How, how revolting is it to see you watch family members or friends, you know, actually paying attention to the media, the news? We are the media. We are the news. Let's bring it on. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna step it up and take it to the streets. You know, so. Uh, Protectors of pedophiles like Robert Doyle, the chief magistrate of the city of uh, Melbourne, the uh, chief people trafficking city in the world. There's a lot of pedophile protectors. Emilio's one. He's a copper here. He mentioned my name yesterday to uh, one of my friends and said he knows where I live. I live with Sonia now. Well, Emilio, you prick, um, I'm going to make you famous because your oh. video that I filmed of you three years ago Go on um, <laughs> when you were... Yeah, it's going up. Oh, by the um, way, gonna... uh, did, at any point on that video, Santo, did uh, did he ask for identification? No, but I've got evidence in that video that he um, is an extortionist and he is a uh, people trafficker and he milked the bond. And uh, I um, have footage of him um, uh, forcing my niece, Layla, to make a statement. Uh, and, oh, by and the way, film... uh, well, here, I, just, I want to keep it really simple. Was he in uniform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then, then you have them under contract to the crown. So the mere the mere wearing of that uniform uh, is proof of his intent, uh, constant intent to aid and abet others into fraud. Mate, so I've it's a private prosecution. The, I've got ten of these motherfucker pre pimp protectors on footage. 
Well, like I've I got said, ten of them. They get famous, especially Emilio. Well, let me let, let, let me I, go ba- let me go back to contract. Let's. I want to get on track here. I need people to see this. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about. The mere fact that these guys are wearing uniforms. Remember what I said. That which you agree with, you're in contract with. So you, by your actions, you are known by the fact that you put that uniform on that morning is proof, all the proof that anyone needs for a private prosecution of the willingness and the willful intent to commit fraud by aiding and abetting others into using a legal name, which is pure fraud. So the mere fact that these guys are caught on camera with their uniforms is proof of their intent to do fact. Oh, yeah, I got them. I'm going to bust them big time, these assholes. I promised him, and actually I was filming the asshole while he was smiling at me and smirking, knowing what was going down. And um, I said, here's Emilio, there's the prick, and I'm going to make him famous one day. And I saw him in court, and I pointed pointed to him. And he, uh, anyway, I was in there for, uh, later. in those days, we were, we, we were going in court. This was about three years ago. Anyway, she kicked him in the nuts. So he's got some... Uh, He's got some, uh, yeah, and, and what he did to her was uh, he, he came knocking at the door because he was coming for um, um, Sonia's partner at the time, Andrew, and um, that's who I went to film. I went down there, they called me, I went down there and filmed it all. I got two hours of footage of me holding these pricks. There was tow, tow trucks there to tow his, his car away. Um, they moved my mother's car, which I... Uh, Parked in front of the car to um, stop them from towing it. They, uh, I've got all this on footage, man. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. Make the assholes famous. And well, put it, on, put it on the, yeah, put make, it on the. Santo, we got to keep this stre- streamlined here. Make it a public record. It's on the record when you put it on YouTube. Now you also have irrefutable evidence. Video foot of the intent to commit fraud. That is all you need for a private prosecution. End of story. Right there. Yeah, his commission's going down too because he'd be a pedophile protector too because he's looking after the banks, isn't he? Ah, and the pedophile government that we have. So um, it's all great. It's all happy. And uh, I urge the listeners to make a copy of this and send it ten times to everybody. Everybody. And Robert Doyle. Yeah. Well, Thank again, you very much. Again, Thank this, you very much. this is about ethereal contracts, and this is what we're busting tonight. This is why I wanted to talk about the crucifixion versus it being Christmas. This is not the uh, the Bethlehem story. So what I want to get out into the ether tonight is that whole illusion to break contract with that thought. When we finally click on this, you have broken the contract. This is the power of what we're doing here. It's <laughs> this is pure creation. We're not dealing in, in in paper. We're dealing in ether here. And when we break the concepts, when we bust them wide open, it's it's why every single word that gets broken down, every single uh, thing that we discover and uncover, is a breaking of those uh, those binds uh, bindings, those ethereal contracts. Uh, and this is where we need to focus. Uh, people that are still playing in a left left brain uh, legal matrix bullshit need to understand what they're agreeing with. You're agreeing with admiralty, and it's keeping you're giving it energy. So once you understand that all things legal are not reality, that's a maxim at law. Okay, fact. Once you get it into the lawful uh, side of your thinking, now it's a new game. There's no admiralty there. It's just uh, by your actions you are known. You see, so uh, by the, the mere fact that any of these individuals hold office of any kind whatsoever is a false personation. It's an impersonation. And that is a capital crime. Every yeah, one of these people are guilty of a capital crime by the fact they have a title. Yeah, Emilio, I wish I had his second name because I'm going to make him famous. I'm, I've caught him on camera in, in the act of aiding and abetting, and that is a capital crime. Uh, if his head's going to come off for it, well, he's going to go to jail because he put my niece and he's putting Andrew, my friend, uh, through hell. Andrew was performing at Fountain Gate Shopping Centre yesterday and he turns up with documents to serve to him. Luckily, Andrew is smart enough and uh, <laughs> dealt with, uh, you know, the whatever, how many thousand fines or whatever. But uh, they surrounded him in one of the most famous shopping centres on the planet, Fountain Gate. They've actually got uh, um, shows here uh, that go around the world 
it's on, you know, Fountain Gate. Uh, it's only a couple of minutes away from my home, a Westfield aberration. It's a monstrosity of corporate filth, putrid, with all the bullshit like McDonald's and all that other crap. I never go to this place, man. When I look at it, I, I feel sick. Westfield, owned by demons. The, I, I won't mention his name. Uh, because I forget uh, right now his surname, but uh, big, uh, you know, uh, big knob in Sydney, Double Bay. He's, uh, you know, he buys up property and puts up the big malls, you know. He's going down to the arsehole. He'd be a pedophile. Um, <clears throat> they all are. And um, so what was I getting at? Uh, what was it? Yeah, he went and... and, and stopped Andrew from performing so I want to say this for all the musicians too this is what these assholes do they like to disrupt your life that's what police are only good for they're assholes they're pigs and pigs you know what you do with them you you uh, chop up their bums and you fry them for egg and bacon breakfast good luck to anyone eat that eats that shit anyway because pigs were were genetically modified from human DNA thousands of years ago by these creators of Beelzebub so that they would stuff your guts with worms and parasites. Good luck and all of those saturated, disgusting fried fats with it dripping. Jan Erb, he was on a show one day and he was saying, mm, I love the cholesterol from fried bacon, the freaking dunce. And he's teaching people that Trivium's going to save the world. Hop in the left brain, everybody. Follow me. We can argue forever now. Oh, is it an ad hominem uh, fallacy or is it another one? Let's argue about which one it is, shall we, for a couple of days. Yeah. Anyway. You know, um, about about the pig, um, um, I, I, I'm sure you know this, but um, in biology, every time, uh, let's say, they talk about uh, organs, you know, they say chimps are a 98 point something uh, related to humans and genetic material, but uh, the pigs, uh, we and the pigs share almost uh, identical anatomy uh, internally. Same uh, size. Well, that's you know, why they can. Use, that's why they can use a, a heart transplant. They can use a pig's heart in place of a human heart for, yeah. uh, for uh, the interim because it, it, it's genetically encoded. Yeah, it's almost the same. And I, um, I, I never heard of a heart, but I've heard of uh, like a kidney uh, dialysis and liver dialysis from pigs, and it worked. Uh, they never put it inside, but they like you know. Well, they use yeah, it. that's where insulin. That's where that's where they get the insulin. They get it from the pig. Yeah. Yep. It's, uh, the pig is the closest match, along with uh, the, the cow is a close, uh, close second of that uh, to the, the human DNA genome. Uh, that, th- yep. th- this is why if you're, eat- if you're eating cow or eating pig, you it's are so literally eating human flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and, so, and on the good side, um, I guess, um, 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 when a pig runs away, um, it becomes uh, wild very quickly. Um, the, uh, when when the pig runs away, uh, you know they're pink when they're uh, domesticated, and in a few months it'll grow fur, and uh, three generations they'll have fangs again. So just to look at humans, this is how fast we get we go free, you know, very fast. Yeah. So and uh, there's something else uh, regarding uh, pigs as well. One sec, uh, just I want to get this thought back. Oh, there where it was. Uh, when you're when you're eating of uh, you know pigs and and cows, you are literally a cannibal. Sound familiar? Cannib L, or why do you think they make? Why do you? What? Hang on, this gets better. Why do you think they don't want us partaking of cannib Isis? Cannabis. So oh, yeah, the oh. priest of Isis, the priestess of Isis. Canna okay. is priest. Right, so there you go. The priest uh, uh, of Isis or the priest of El. That there, there's a difference between cannabis and cannibal. And yeah. that's why they call it. That's why they call it Mary Juana, Mary Jane, Mother Mary. Mother Mary comforts me. Oh yes, she does. Oh yeah. Oh yes. So she does. And, and and there is cannab. Uh, it's spelled with an A L, right? So cannabale. So it's yeah, bale it, it, exactly. So there's the the, the the mind, and, and there's uh, Cain again, Cain up. Cain and right. Bale, you know, it's all, Sorry, you know, the... when you're a cannibal, you're a Cain and Bale all yeah. together, you know. 
Hey guys. So uh, for those of you that that, that are still, hey, one, one sec. For, uh, yeah, and then jump oh, in. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, for those of you that are still partaking of uh, the meats, uh, you might want to think twice about which priestess you are being active part of. And that's seven one seven jumped in. How are you? I am well. How are you? Who we so got? Probably on a del- this is Thomas, and I'm Thomas. probably on a delay. Am I on a delay? No, you're you're right in there, bud. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, um, yeah, this is a brilliant time. In the past couple of days, has been brilliant as well. I've been learning, um, learning so much from from all of you. Um, I think that are that are present, and probably not present too. Just wanted to no, say hell, hello hell and table, thank. Eh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hell of a table, isn't it? Oh my God, it's it's, it's amazing. I I love it. Um, taking a lot of notes and writing a lot and creating a lot on my end and um, writing some oh, ways. But, it's great. So. By the way, just uh, just on that note, guys, um, I don't want to forget. I did my first show on Revolution Radio too. I don't want to you know distract people from this show because. Oh no no, uh, Santa, we do this together, and I'm so glad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, Gary uh, Scott Sov, remember uh, Gary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that the very show that we met on. Uh, he he uh, called me on Skype today and wants me to uh, do a weekly show. Uh, like, like I don't have enough shows anyway uh, on uh, No Borders Radio as well. So this is how we're, we we got to pull it all together. So it, it's this is this is going to bring more people to our table when we're working together. So yeah, this is what we're doing by branching out, right? So bra, mine, key, right? <laughs> branched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the first the first show I had a listen I had listener first up listenership of a quarter of a million listeners. So wow. you'll be joining me very very soon first up on that show, Kate. Right? As soon as you um, want. And w- yep, absolutely. And that will that will only grow when when that is uh, uh, heard by. I encouraged everyone to make recordings of it because I dedicated it as a Christmas gift to the world. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again on next week's show properly, real, real good. And then after that, you're on the show with me, Kate, and we are going to um, we're going to bust it wide, wide open. And Christmas is going to be like never, ever before celebrated in history. Oh yeah, well, it's about busting it, and the, and the joy of you doing it on the Friday night. Yeah, we can we can still do the Friday night for an hour and just roll right into Revolution Radio, so it's a nonstop, and everyone just carries right on through. So there is nothing lost. All we're going to do here is gain even more momentum. So the faster you can get me on, the more we can get that whole thing rolling together. Neat, eh? Good, beautiful. Yep, yep. So Santo, I found that at freedomslips.com. Is that the site to go to get the Revolution uh, Revolution Radio? That's the one. Have they got it? Have they got an a- an archive up yet? I don't know, but or is is there anything that we? Yeah, I don't know if their archive is yet. I can check it out. Uh, you guys we need continue. we need I'll someone. Check. We need someone of the list to get that and put it on YouTube and just give it to everybody ten times and get it to upload it and upload it on their stuff so that everyone's got it. <clears throat> you'll find that you'll want to, I think. The more the merrier. That's how I see it. So whatever it takes to get all... I mean, I've done shows on Revolution Radio as well. So, I mean, it, and look what we have now. We've got Revolution Radio, Wolf Spirit Radio, uh, Critical Mass Radio, uh, No Borders Radio, you name it. And it all, it's all coming together. And uh, I, this is the whole game here. It's about... This is where we gather our intent. And this is one of the reasons why I'm focusing so heavily on... Um, what do you call it? Oh, so I should probably put some water in there, eh? Anyway, um, this is why I'm focusing so heavily on contract, ethereal contract. That which we agree with, we are in contract with. So we have to break the agreements. And I'm not talking paper ones here, boys and girls. I'm talking your God agreements. And I hope by now you guys have all figured it out that God is here like near gods. And this is this is the energy we're pulling together. And every one of us that pulls away from the whore of Babylon 
is a major, major drain because when you think of the power you actually wield and the fact that you were awake means that you were feeding it shit piles like me and Santo and the rest of us, shit piles of energy. Now, not only have we pulled away from that, broken these agreements, now we have our table here and others that are getting together. On, not only have we pulled away from Babylon, but now we're actually the virus going into it and destroying the beast from the belly out. This is this is the game, boys and girls, and we've got it. We've got it. You know, like never um, before. Like never before. Um, Santos, I've uh, I've I've heard you uh, before I got in. I've heard you talk about the the you know the the New Year's all 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 the all the all the all the types of them, and I just thought about it. You know, you have two Bishvat, which is. Um, um the it's the beginning of the year for trees it's not it's like uh, you count trees according to two bishvat you know it, um so and that sign is in aquarius and you got um one of the myths is that the world was created when uh, the same day that uh, the jews got the torah which is uh, sivan which is gemini another human sign and you got, uh, like you said, Elul, which is uh, Rosh Hashanah is basically at the end of it, but it's uh, between Virgo and Libra, which is another human sign. And the last one is Nisan, which is the Ram. <laughs> uh, I'd hold up. Sure. Uh, Santo got. Uh, uh, one oh, I heard I, Santo got pumped. Okay. Can you go right. back to the uh, two bishat? Or be, uh, pff, I wish I could say it, but anyway, you, you there yeah. now, Santo? <laughs> Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I just wanted I wanted Avi to go back because you got bumped right when he was starting there. Yeah, go okay, ahead, Avi. So, <laughs> so the four the four types of uh, New Year's we have. So two bishvat, which is the uh, when you uh, it's just counting the trees. It's not counting anything else. It's just the age of trees. Like uh, it's their it's their day. Two bishvat, which is a full moon, by the way. It's in the human sign of Aquarius, right? Then we have. Um, uh, Sivan, which uh, we celebrate the bringing of the Torah, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, the esoteric Judaism speaks that the world was created on that day too, which is another human sign, Gemini. And we have uh, Rosh Hashanah, um, which yep. is he- head of year, which is between uh, Virgo and Libra, which Virgo is another human sign. And then we have the Nisan one, which is the Ram, uh, you know. Jesus and all of them, the lamb. So three human signs and the sheep. Um, coincidence, of course. Um, yep. yep. Just, uh, just a minor was, one. Beautiful. Yeah. Just thought it's pretty interesting that one. And uh, about what you said before about the newspapers that people read it, I I thought it's very uh, it's like a joke to me. Um, uh, number one newspaper in Israel is uh, called Yediot Acharonot, which is, by the way, uh, last news, not first news, whatever that means. Um, and it's uh, the slogan is the newspaper of the state. And uh, the founders and owners are uh, the Moses family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moses family. Yeah. Just a just another coincidence, right? When yeah, you start seeing seeing the game, it, it really starts to become the comedy it is. And, it is. and I've said this countless times: we are going to laugh our way out of this one. It's so much. It's just a yeah. game, you know. It's just, just a game. It's so funny. <laughs> hey, um, how's this scripture? Genesis fifteen nine uh, of Yad, and he said yep. unto him, "Take me a heifer, uh, take me an heifer, Taurus." of three years old, and a she-goat, Capricorn, of three years old, and a ram, Aries, of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon, Libra, the turtle dove and the pigeon balancing out the scales. And these are the typical signs you've always sacrificed a bull, a ram, a dove, or a goat. And that's it. It's in Genesis 15, verse 9. All of those four zodiacal signs in one verse. And Genesis 126 says... And God said, um, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, that would be water, and over the birds of the heavens, that would be Eve hiding in the word for air, and over the cattle and over all the earth, 
would be the element of Earth. So then we've got this guy Noah that turns up, right? And his yeah. name is obviously is obviously Nua, which is fire in Hebrew. And he has three sons. Well, of course, fire has three sons. They would be air, water, and earth in that order. Hence, firstborn Japheth, Jupiter, ruler of air in astrology, um, is the first element that Noah has. Then he has Ham, which would be Ham, that would be Aries, Mars, Maritime, Water, yes it would, the cursed one. Why was Ham and his son Canaan cursed, the canine of Aries? Well, because Water does not like Noah, fire. Hence, Canaan saw Noah naked when Noah was drunk. Shem turns out to be Saturn. Earth, Yabesha in Hebrew, word for earth, Shem, right. dusky, renown, pro, uh, prosperity, name. So, of course, yeah, Noah, Nua, fire, had uh, three elements. Of course he did. And, uh, by the way, um, to be anti-Semitic is an oxymoron, because <laughs> it's <laughs> anti the earth. <laughs> Funny yeah. about that. Yeah, what, what you just said, you know, I, I never thought about Yabasha, it's basically dry, you know, it's it's the opposite of water. <laughs> Yabasha, it's, it means that Yavesh is yeah. dry in Hebrew. Well, yeah, it's, it's dry. Go earth, ahead. Earth, dry and cold are its two humors. Isn't it Saturn, funny, isn't it dry funny, and cold. Uh, isn't it funny that when we start to actually listen very closely to what it is we're saying, yeah. and with our eyes open here I, this is why I wanted to bring this in here I want to share something with you guys uh, it was, this one came in from Joy uh, last week but I think this will resonate with everybody especially you Santo um, here's a message I got from Joy I know you know but just saying I don't ever expect for you to respond to my post which I do always uh, I'm just thankful for a place to set my intent and here's what her intent is for Matthew 18 verse nineteen twenty. Okay, and here it is. Ch check this out. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Contract. Contract. Yep, yep. It's a spiritual contract, isn't it? It's, it's intent. It's the intent you put behind the papers, is it not? Yeah, well, look, look at the word intent. Let's break it down. In, to be, like, part of. Ten, there's your one zero, or I-O, the goddess, right? The creation, that's the masculine intent of the one and the zero being the void or the ovum. And, of course, Q is, is a sperm inseminating creation. Uh, but you have I-O and then um, t uh, the N, which makes it mine. So we have the in... Uh, with intent in creation, mine, T, the note of love, and of course the cross, uh, and we've all been double crossed. Uh, oh, by the way, I should mention I watched V for Fen Vendetta for the first time last night, and oh my, oh my. <laughs> yeah, game's over, boys and girls. <laughs> Guy Fox yeah. just showed up. So uh, I wonder how much intent Emilio Mandarino, that's his name, yeah, he's going to be famous, the Mandarin, the little pimp. And he was uh, fetching, uh, with intent, goodies for his pedophile masters, the bar, and that pedophile. He was a good pedophile protector. Uh, he was a good judge who uh, um, sentenced a $250 fine on Layla for kicking Mandarino in his little Mandarini cojones, which he hasn't got, the arsehole. And he's going to be famous. Hello, Emilio. I, I, I noticed that you uh, mentioned my name yesterday at Fountain Gate. I just thought I'd say hello back and um, yeah, perhaps uh, yeah, make you famous like you really want because you really, really, really need to hassle Andrew, don't you? But Andrew dealt with you, you little mofo. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Mandarino, yeah, little mandarin oranges, and he got he got his tree rattled, eh? Okay, good. Yeah, he's a, probably a little constable here in the uh, Victorian constabulary, mm-hmm. and um, the arsehole chief commissioner who also protects his pedophiles in the Rotary Club, in the Salvation Army, <laughs> in the Rothschild Foundations of Charity. What's charity? They are ramming it up our backsides. Uh, Salvation Rothschild Red Army, uh, Salvation Army Red Cross, that's called uh, Rothschild language. Uh, And, you know, you see these idiots giving them so much money. These are the ones that fund the Victoria Peace Police uh, registered on the Securities Exchange in New York. Uh, I forget the number, I've got it somewhere, but um, I think Mandarino, the little pimp, the little pawn, works for them. Well, here, uh, did, did no one else question why the Salvation Army has a red shield? There's the Rothschild or the red shield? They are all pedophile run, filthy at the top, dirty, putrid, along with all the Christian registered churches, including the Jehovah's Witnesses, a lot of them. They are the scum of the earth. They are the reason why we suffer on this planet because they worship their god Beelzebub, a thought form, a nasty thought form that wants nothing but evil for the rest of us and suffering and murder and kids being vaccinated with shit and 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 and, and, and st- their, their DNA stolen off them furtively with intent. This is why, that, uh, uh, Santo, this is why we have to break contract with the physical. Because while you are in contract with the physical and living in that physical realm, you are joined with it, through it. That Because the DNA is a spiritual and uh, physical uh, connection, right? I, I just want to do a quick shout out. We got uh, a little, well, 16 minutes until we roll over. So I just want to make sure that anyone that wants to get in this call, uh, that they have ample opportunity to do so. Uh, you can call in, and I, I assure you, uh, in 16 minutes, if you're not on the board, the show will end for you, and you'll have to wait for the archive. So if you want to stay in real time with us, uh, you can call in at area code 661-467-2401. Six six one four six seven two four zero one, and of course, if you're uh, you're listening on Blog Talk, uh, you can cl- uh, click on the Skype button that's there. If it's not, refresh the page. It will show up. It t- might take a bit, but it does show up. Uh, click on the Skype button. Follow your nose. It'll bring you to the board. Once on the board, all you have to do is hit one on your keypad on the phone, or open the dial pad on Skype and hit one there, and that will bring you to the board. Or uh, let me know that you're on the board and want to jump in the call with us. So with that being said, I just want to say a great big thank you to Paul Giovanni and the crew at Critical Mass Radio, co.uk, uh, because without Paul's initial planting of that Critical Mass Radio seed uh, a year and a half ago, uh, we wouldn't be at this table right now changing the planet. And this is what this table is doing. I know that. I see it every day. And I know you guys see it too. And the more you see it, the more empowered you are. So... Uh, you cannot put a price tag on that. And I have to ask, I always do, if anyone can help out uh, keeping the station afloat, uh, please do. You can donate right at the criticalmassradio.co.uk web, uh, website. And there's a subscribe button. I'm a subscriber. And uh, there's also a donate button that, um, if you can, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, other than that, all I'm asking people to do is to get their in 10 T, their intent uh, behind this, and there's a spiritual contract we can all kind of get on board with, that our voice gets louder and louder and louder. I think that's something we can all agree with, because uh, the louder our voice is at this table, all of us collectively, uh, this universe does well, <laughs> we've already got this game, um, I would just like to see it go down a little bit quicker, but that's just me being Gemini impatient, uh, mutable air. So anyway, I just wanted to let people know that. Um, and I got to tell you, you can't get radio like this anywhere except here. Go ahead, Santo. Yeah, that's it, Kate. And I want to repeat and stress, uh, please, listeners, please, make copies. Send 10 to everybody. The shit will go down. It will go down. This world is not prepared for this level of consciousness, but they have to sooner or later. It's the baptism of fire. It's the Promethean fire, and it's the, the the presence of Christ, the return of the Messiah, 
it's it's everything. It's aqua- it, it is the Aquarian um, um, spirit air sign that is baptizing us, and there is an awakening, and many are awakening. We why do we see so many police now putting down their um, arms when with protesters in Italy? Uh, Francesca's telling me putting down their arms and and joining the uh, yep, the protesters. In. Why? Yeah, why is this happening contemporaneously while other bad things are happening and idiots are not getting... Because idiots like um, Emilio Mandarino are just too freaking dumb to get it and they need to get it real quick or they're going to jail. Emilio will be in jail just for what he did to my niece and I've got the evidence on footage. And so a private prosecution... coming down and um and this is the way we need to go we need to if if these bottom scum porn don't get it these pigs don't get it they're going to get it and i would use these audio files as a loving way to remind them that it's high time they did because we're not in their kingdom anymore we're not on their pirate ships they're milking the bonds these are pedophiles these are pimps this is rome at her worst any wonder 700,000 souls perished in the Colosseum alone. They made the Moroccan elephant extinct, the pedophile, pimpish elite of Rome. They pillaged and, and destroyed syncretism. Alexandria went down. Carthage went down. Corinth went down on the same day as, as Carthage. Jerusalem went down they all went down and burned to hell while julius caesar was laughing about killing a million gauls and he called them gully roosters that he chopped their heads off it was a roman bloodbath of bloodlust and bloodletting and the inquisition is still on and dickheads like emilio mandarino are putting wind in its sails because he gets a paycheck check the constable yeah, well, not for much longer. And uh, just wanted uh, Shanman had asked me um, a question here. Great question. Uh, what energy do we give to Christmas, uh, not Xmas, to not make it uh, a bad thing? Well, that's the whole idea of why I wanted to expose it for what it is. This is not uh, about the baby in a manger uh, scenario here, guys. This is the actual crucifixion. So uh, Easter and Christmas in, in in the Western realms has been swapped. So what we're doing is just breaking agreement with it. Now, for me, it's very easy. I uh, will not go along with anything as, as far as what the Whore of Babylon commerce has um, uh, put in place. So, uh, again, are you going to celebrate uh, a, a pagan ritual in the mirror so you're actually promoting our, your own crucifixion uh, in the mirror so as long as we understand what it is you've already broken the ethereal contract that's it it, it is that simple so just agree to not agree you know or I can agree to disagree with that no problem And so what I'm trying to do here is get people into that frame of mind that you got to know that that is how powerful you are you're gods and it's not about paper it's not about physical it's not about you know l- literal DNA, literal blood, literal, all of this. is This is a spiritual intent only. you got to get it clean. So it's about breaking away. This is sacrificing the lamb, okay? Sacrifice the lamb which left brain and all of the agreements that we've gotten into. And all we have to do is look at the things for what they are, see them for what they are, and go, no, nah, not in my watch, not anymore. And that's all it takes. That is the power of your intent. So, great question. Uh, no sweat. It's easy. All you've got to do is change your mind, change the universe. Ever hear that before? I think I've heard it once or twice. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't want to send these fuckers to jail. I want to send them back to the core of the universe for recycling. It's where they I love, are the, way, I love the way you think, Michael. I love the way you think. Yeah. Back to Slugville. <laughs> deep, deep down, deep, deep down, where they belong. Um, how how I, I, they got I, here in the first place, one wonders. How they got here in the first place, one just uh, wonders. What are these? Yeah. I, I guess I, I should. Think, I think we all got down there. That's what I think. Sadly, 
Exactly. I guess I should announce that I'm uh, going to be doing a little chat tomorrow, weather permitting. It should be fine. I mean, if I made it through tonight, I should be okay tomorrow. But uh, I'll be at uh, at the Metro Hall in Toronto tomorrow, 55 on Street. Uh, I believe it's 318, if I recall. But uh, from noon till probably around 5, and I will be uh, doing my uh, phonics and uh, contracts and what have you. Uh, to try to break people out of this left brain illusion. Uh, if you agree to carry a license, then you're with the horror of Babylon. Sorry, it's just the way it works. Uh, that's what spiritual contracts are, boys and girls. Uh, so you are not spiritually free until you break free of the physical, the phi psi call, the creation of spirit harvest. Your call. Okay, oh, that's cool. beautiful. The Phi Cycle. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, that's an old one. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Nice. Yeah, that's actually that's one of my phi essays. I, a few, actually, it's in a few of my essays. Phi, the Phi ratio, Psi, Spirit. And, of course, what do you have? Phi is a 21st letter, so there's your 777, uh, Greek alphabet. And Psi, Psalms, right, is a 23rd letter of the Greek alphabet, just a coincidence. And, of course, the phonics, the sound of call, which is harvest, to harvest, right? So it's, it's the creative spiritual harvest. And if you're in the phi psi call way of thinking, guess what you are? <laughs> you're the harvest. Okay, can you break down fidelity? Like phi day L I T Phi. Well, there's uh, again with sound. There's your sacred geometry, right? The phi ratio. Uh, D, which is delta, fourth letter, the trinity, a box. Uh, so there's your physical matter. Uh, e, which is yang in the mirror, so uh, dark made light. Uh, L, the the intent or the masculine intent uh, of, of creation. Uh, I, the self, and T, the note of love. It goes on even more than that, but uh, you, you start to get an idea that every word, every sound you utter, without without knowing about it, you're you're actually creating uh, from a God position. That's the power of the tongue pledge, and why we need to stop with the battle on nonsense of not knowing what we're saying. If someone is just talking without uh, making any sense, they're just known to be uh, one who likes to babble on. And it, let's break it again. Baby, law, n, which is baby, law, mine. Uh, I'm thinking we should get out of the baby law, change our, you know, get rid of the diapers, and let's get into the more adult realms of things here. Yeah? Get out of yeah. kindergarten. Just yeah, saying. Kindergarten's over. Yeah. Um, I, I, I got a little Christmas rant, um, if you're up for it. Oh, please. <laughs> okay, so first of all, what I think people should do at uh, Xmas is basically sit around and instead of looking at the stockings and what they bought with their filthy money to each other, you know, they didn't even make it, they didn't nothing. Just sit and, you know, think of good allegories. Uh, that's a good Christmas day for me. Anyway. Yeah, it, or actually, yeah, better, better yet, save all... Save all the presents that that, that you want to give until Easter, because that's exactly when it's supposed to be anyway. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, so, all right. So, how, how about this? Um, in Santa, this pertains to something you mentioned earlier. You meant, uh, I think you quoted Psalm eighty-one, correct? Yeah, I think I did. Yep. Yeah, which is uh, funny. I was led to that just in writings and tried trying to follow some things. Led to um, start adapting. Psalm 81, um, you know, putting music to it as a gift to my family because I probably won't, I don't know what I'm going to do for each one of them, but um, so when that really made me want to jump in the call when I heard you quote that, I was like, oh man, here it is. <laughs> so I, I have to finish that actually, but just thought that pertained. Kate, I think this deserves a coincidence uh, remark. Um, oh, you know. absolutely. <laughs> yep. There it is. <laughs> Okay, so, Santo's show. I kept saying freedom slips, but it's freedom's lips. Even better. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, freedom's lips, the labra. <laughs> so if you go to freedom's oh, lips. Beautiful. See, I'm Santo, I do listen to you. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's great. Um, so I've got um, revolution and freedom's lips. That sounds like a lot of abracadabra I create with speech so I'm going to be doing a little bit of creating only thing is I'm going to create 
creating knowledge forms rather than thought forms, with, which is what empty-brained academic intellectual trivium types are spewing out from their vomit. No, thinking and below is all noise, sense and emotion. That's air, water and earth. Fire, anagogic, um, uh, agnes, the lamb, um, that is knowing. And that's what we're going to do. This is the Promethean fire. This is the substance we are really made of. We are made of mystical fire. We are a magic creation. And we are only just waking up. So, yeah, so we have to light our, our, our candles on our caned El Abra. <laughs> yep, the priest of El speaking. <laughs> caned El Abra. The priest of El speaking. I come from I come from Calabria in um south southern Italy and the original people there were called the Italians. Italy is named after Calabria and it uh, they were called the Brutti, the Brutum and they were the most fiercest fighters against the Roman Empire. They were the they of all the Italians they held them up the most. And that's where all the great philosophers of renown have ever lived, including the two great, uh, the three of the P's, the um, Pythagoras, Plato and Porphyry, Empedocles, Diodorus Siclus, Timaeus, if that's, well, they say that he lived there, uh, Theocritus, um, uh, who was the other one? Uh, Plotin Plotinus, um, heaps of them. And why? Well, because... Oh, and um, Campanella came from there, too, actually, if I'm not wrong. But um, because they, have, they were impoverished by, by Rome, because these people, and even Sicily, they hated Rome. You know, the world has hated Rome. Even Italy, Italians have hate Rome. In fact, 10 or 15 years ago, there was a league in northern Italy, in Milan, from Milan, they were centred around the industrial heart of Italy, and they wanted to detach themselves from, from Rome and south, southern Italy. They wanted to form a new country, the beautiful Mezzo del Piano, Milano, the middle Lombardia. of the plain, which was a Celtic plain, Lombardia, yeah. And yeah. they wanted to say... Fuck the Romans. They can have all their bullshit down there and we have another country. The world has ever, ever been against Rome. And so these soldiers, these little foot soldiers like uh, Emilio Mandarino, they've got something to think about because they're all going to jail when Rome comes a-crumbling down. And it's a-crumbling because a lot of coppers, they don't want to do that bullshit work anymore against their brothers and hurt their brothers. That's over. Well, yeah, and something else I want to mention, uh, going back to the uh, the apocalypse letter, the apostolic letter, uh, that removed the immunity uh, from the spiritual side, guys. This is why my focus has, al has always been, and will always be, on the spiritual side, because I'm I'm going to stay on the ka you say cause causal nature of what we're doing here. Okay, so uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. These guys, it's, it's, it's not the physical immunity that they're dealing with here. They are naked spiritually, so when we stay on the high ground, they can take the low road, we'll take the high road. Yeah, and we'll get there before you. <laughs> okay, so this is why we need to always be mindful, always be mindful of your mindful. thoughts. Oh, someone's uh, mic's open there, or, or speakers. Yeah, my, my, uh, my headphones slipped, yeah. yeah. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, and I do want to mention, Carrie, you're in the call here, Carrie Runzer, and uh, 818, have you jumped in yet? Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm here. Real good. Good. Jump in, guys, we're in the rollover now, so let's play. All right, excited gonna... to be listening to you guys here tonight. For sure. Yeah, is, is, is this Carrie? Amen. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. well, yeah, speak up there, Carrie. Let's hear her, cause you, you just jumped in, so I want to make sure that, uh, yeah, we love having you. We love having everybody here, so jump in. Yeah, no, I'm just a new uh, new listener to you guys. I uh, feel, um, feel quite honored and uh, excited to be listening and learning. Well, we're glad to have you, and nothing to be excited about. We hang out in the air every night, you know. <laughs> hey, Santo, did you get up this morning and have a pee? Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, and I didn't even call the mayor or anybody for permission. I did it myself. <laughs> How about that? 
Hey, 818 here. Yeah, hey, who Hello? we got? This is Lance here in 818. Yeah. Lance, how are say, you? Uh, hi, how are you? How is everyone? Thank Good. you very much. Good. I wanted, to, I wanted to say that, jump in and say that I was listening to Mark Tazio today. I don't know if any of you know him. Uh, it was the first time I ever came across it today. And he was talking about Satanism. And uh, it was really interesting in that he was saying that Satan, Satanists uh, really dwell in the physical. And uh, you're saying, Kate, that uh, we have to break that uh, contract to the physical, whereas these Satanists, they just really, really want to get into the physical, physical. And and he pointed out that, he pointed out that you know, these Satanists, they're into, like, pleasure and it's just like everywhere you look around here in our society, it's like Pleasures Satanism of the flesh. spread everywhere. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Satanism, Satanism. This is the country of Satanism. This is a a, a world of Satanists. The, the you know the whole elite are a Satanist, and they they're bringing it, all of us, everybody with them, unless we break this contract with them. Well, that's the whole thing about the horror of Babylon, which is commerce. Anything commerce, money, banks, anything legal. That is all the whore of Babylon, all based out of the commerce center of London City, uh, the city of London State. Uh, you're dealing with Saturnians. Now, uh, Mark Passio, absolutely, I've uh, had him on, uh, had great, great shows with him. Uh, wonderful. He's one of the very few people that I reference uh, to get people to listen to. Mark is absolutely brilliant. I, li I like to count him as a friend, and I know Santos the same way as well. So, um yeah, I urge people, because what uh, Mark Passio's background, what he comes uh, uh, from is he was involved very deeply in that. So he, he's giving people the perspective from having been very deep inside it, having uh, removed himself from it. So i to tell you, here's the thing. You do not know something until you experience it. And I, for anything in, in, in terms of Satanism and the rest of it, Mark Passio is the go-to guy. End of story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah it it yeah. was incredible. Uh, yeah, it was incredible because he was, say, he was telling me what Satanists are like. It's like psychopath. And I had a friend. I started a medical marijuana uh, dispensary here in California, in L.A. Good and my partner, my partner was uh, this guy. And he said he was a Satanist, and I didn't really know what that meant. He did, my, my partner, he had a uh, pentagram on his neck, and uh, I didn't know, I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know what Satanist was. I didn't know what it meant. But now that I listen to Mark Pazio, it all falls together, because he was so self, he was so self-centered. Everything was about it. me, me, me. He was so spoiled. Oh, my God, he was horrible. He couldn't even wipe his butt without someone helping him. But uh, yeah. Um, was, just so you know, he wasn't self-centered; he was ego-centered. Ego-centered, yeah. Ego, uh, extremely. Oh yeah. It was horrible. I thought he—he—he he, 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 he reminded me of an alligator. When I looked into his eyes, he was just—it was just heartless in his eyes. And he was my partner, but I had him as a partner because he was so ruthless. Uh, and some in, in a business like that, uh, like a medical marijuana dispensary here, you kind of have to be ruthless sometimes because, uh, you know, it's crazy over here sometimes. But um, yeah, anyway, you, you said it in a business. You have to be ruthless because you know it's a business. You know. Mm, yeah. It starts that from ruthlessness. Right. Now here, here's a question for Santo. Uh, Santo, who is Ruth in the Bible? <laughs> um, she was a progenitor of the Christ. Yeah, Ruth Less. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. no, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just a coincidence. Or, I, wow. <laughs> yeah. Phonics he was, be phonics. Uh, oh yeah. Wow. Phonics be phonics. She's by the way, she's like the great grandmother of David, you know, in a way. Yep, Jesse. Yep. Of the branch uh, of David, of the branch of yep. Jesse, the branch of yep. <clears throat> the branch of Jesse. That's Jesse Fire, the son. Good, good, good old, uh, good old family. <laughs> um, yep, they're so, all. Yeah, and I was saying, uh, I was, and what he pointed out is that everywhere you look around, it's like Satanism. Even all uh, these innocent people and their families, they're practicing Satanism, and they don't even know it when they're watching commercials and and just going out and buying stuff and buying stuff. And it seems like almost 
Uh, Christmas is a, a satanic practice almost. Oh yeah, Santa Claus. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, check this one out. I used to live in Goa a long time, and it's a, uh, it's like the Catholic state of India, and they hang. They have these paper mache um, stars. It's the pentagram, and they all hang upside down. <laughs> well, I mean, I showed that back here. I took some photos. I was just like, "You guys see this?" <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> oh man! See, I told you it's a comedy. Are we starting to get it now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, about about uh, uh, Christmas, I uh, I was beginning my rant. Um, so Santa Claus, which is a uh, Saturn uh, Claus, and he drives reindeers and all that. So. Um, uh, and uh, uh, seven, um, 18th century, uh, there was a very hard time uh, for the worldwide Jewish community, which means awakened people. And there was this uh, false uh, thing of uh, there was this. Uh, they found uh, this guy named uh, uh, Natana Azati from Gaza. He found a man named Shabtai Tzvi, which is Saturn deer, by the way, um, or uh, you know Saturn deer, yeah. And he said, uh, this guy is our Messiah. And, um, you know, there was a big uh, celebration. And uh, a few days later, the Ottoman uh, um, caliph came and, uh, you know, talked to him. And like a few hours, he converted to Islam, whatever. So um, his name is Shabtai Tzvi, Saturn Deer. You know, that's Santa Claus. You know, he's just uh, just another just another one of those... <laughs> just another one of those, you know, Jesus guy types, you know, just uh, coming up and enslaving us all over again. So, um, oh, you know, Shaman, Shaman just sent me um, a, a picture on Facebook. <laughs> it's it's uh, kind of creepy, but it's really cool. It's uh, like. Uh, Satan sitting in a chair with his head down, uh, uh, like on a throne, and right above it, uh, wrote, done. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. This one's done, baby. Thanks, Sam. We rock. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, um, I had also one. Uh, uh, Santos was talking uh, before about the, um, you know, how the, in the Bible it says, uh, "Let's make God in our own image." So. Basically, someone who reads that and relates to a, an outside God says, you know, someone else did in my own image. And when you read the uh, in Hebrew, it, it says Betsalmo, which is in the shadow. He created it in the shadow because if you believe outside, you're done for, you know, you're in the shadow world. It's not, it, it, it's much better than that, you know. So, when you believe it's outside, it's in the shadow. When you believe it's you... It's your shadow. <laughs> so, it's all in the ether. It's, it's all there. All good. It's all good, you know. It's all there and it's all good. All there and all good. All right, so everybody else call. jump in. You got Santa here. here. So, so, so hit him with some questions. This is beautiful. So I was in a coffee shop today, and um, this couple started talking to me and my, my wife. And then at the end, he hands me this um, religious pamphlet and tells me, oh, I go to this Baptist church down the road. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm in another, I pick it up later and I start reading it. Literally, it physically made me want to puke. My body was reacting like, oh my God, I got to rip this up and throw it away. I was about to puke. And my wife, I mentioned this to my wife and she's like, yeah, when the Jehovah Witnesses came to our house and gave us one of those pamphlets, I felt like puking too, and I threw it away. That's how... Ooh. <laughs> uh, b before you throw it away, just look how many stars are on it, how many suns are on it, how many, you know, lambs. It's it's always funny to see. Just That's some scary, scary shit they've got in their papers, man. They've got some real scary, scary, vomitous, vomitous shit in their papers. You know, the Watch Out Tower and the uh, Asleep, the Awake magazine. Um, uh, you know. Santo, I really need you to stop holding back. I need you to really let people know what you, what you honestly think. 
<laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try, would you? Oh my God, I love you. Uh, Kate, I gotta jump in just for a sec, but that just sounds just like when I was in uh, Little Rock for six hours waiting at the bus station, and those two kids with the baby, uh, and and these two women, Jehovah's Witness, came in. And I was walking out the door, and I passed them. They walked up to that little couple and handed them a watchtower, and I turned around, and I said, oh, uh-uh. I walked back, and I said, give me that. And I yanked it out of her hand, and I walked up, and I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, I'm going to give this back to you, and I'm just going to refer you to a really good friend of mine. His name is Santos Bonacci. And both of those women's jaws hit the floor. <laughs> Their eyes looked like they saw the devil in, 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 in flesh. They ran away almost screaming. It was just, just priceless. So, I just had to, yeah. Yeah, you probably, you probably have Pope Francis saying, uh, everybody, all you pimp supporters today, <laughs> he, he, uh, he'll, be, he'll, be giving his, he'll be giving his Christmas speech and he'll probably be saying, please, please, don't wa- uh, listen to Santos Bernacci. He, he's from the devil. Uh, <laughs> just listen to me. They definitely <laughs> knew your name, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, I will make sure. I will make sure that every Jehovah's Witness who has ever lived will know my name, and all of the pedophiles that were ever in that organisation will know my name. Yeah, that's, that's a good goal. That's for sure. I, yeah, I, I dig I, that one. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Spoken like a spiritual warrior. Oh so yeah. Santo, don't don't the Jehovah's believe that a certain number are getting to heaven and they're out there recruiting? I'm like, according to what you're thinking. Aren't you now putting yourself? You're you're gonna get replaced. Somebody else is. You're recruiting somebody to take your place. Oh, Santo, can I decode? Can, can I decode the hundred and forty-four thousand for everybody, please? please. Oh yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, boy, did they miss the boat on this one. Uh, the reference to one hundred and forty-four thousand, because zeros don't exist in terms of numbers. What you have there is the is nine. So it's only those that achieve consciousness. That, that can find heaven, that, that, and heaven is within, your consciousness within. So while they're out looking for 144,000 meat sticks, they missed the boat completely. And you want another number nine? I'll give you another, I'll give you another number nine, which uh, is the number nine of all number nines. In the Bible, there is always mention of uh, three different um, types of numbering. And um, it is times, time, and half a time. Three and a half? Th- yeah, three and a half years is another version. 42 months is another version. Or 1,260 days. And they're all the same thing. That Eight is a number of yards, by the way. That is a number of yards in a mile. 1,260. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it gets better. Um, so... Uh, so, so in, in the Bible, um, mostly in Revelation, it talks about this. In fact, um, I'll recommend a beautiful book for folks: Meditations on the Apocalypse, a psycho-spiritual perspective on the Book of Revelation by F. Asta, beautiful name, Asta Barnwell. Whew, there's a lot there, but anyway, we won't stop on that. <laughs> um, but um, uh, it's um, so in days it's one thousand two hundred and sixty a mile. It's forty-two months. They were persecuted for forty-two months. It's three and a half days, or it's times time half a time, and um, that all adds up, that all adds up to nine. And as I said before, Sagittarius is the number nine. It's the mutable fire sign, it's the priestly sign where the beast becomes the man or the hero is coming up out of the man and, and of course who, are, who else but to symbolise that better than St. Peter at his pearly gates, Jupiter the ruler of Sagittarius. And there the lamb is sacrificed on Ara and then the winter begins it, and Saturnalia takes over whilst the lamb Anno Domini is being sacrificed on the last deacon of uh, Sagittarius the 17th of December, begins the Brumalia. Get the word Brum. <laughs> That's Abram, the ram. Saturn's festival was once called Brumalia. And yes, it started in Capricorn, not in Aries. Interesting. But this is the whole trick of the, the, the whole thing, you see. That's why you have to understand the ecliptic, otherwise you're lost. 
you're lost, you're forever lost. And so that's um, the mutable sign of Sagittarius, the ninth sign. In um, the ninth house in astrology is the house of um, spirituality, dreams, visions, metaphysics, the anagogic. It's, it's the allegoric. It shows who you will be, what your nature is as a spiritual entity. And as you know, and from the causal entity, because of that magical, magical number nine, and so powerful and a very, very big, big number. Everything pivots around that number, and it's all in Sagittarius. Spiral yep. out, right? Yep, it's spiral. And you mentioned the spiral before. It, it's um, the the um, phi cycle. Um, Spiral, which is a helix in your DNA, and is what the sun's doing. So when you're looking at someone's native chart, you are actually studying astrophysics. You see, that's why they don't want astrology to be understood, because what you're watching when you follow the sun, this is why it's important to know where your sun is. Because the sun is at the head of the apex, and following behind is the messenger, Mercury. And you'll always see him close to the sun, because... Of course, we're behind Mercury, the sun's directly in front, and of course the sun, Mercury can never be more than 28 degrees from the sun either way in its four stations, retrograde, swift, um, uh, um, direct, and um, stationary. That's what all planets do. And so, and Venus then, you can see her, her part of the helical spiral is a bit wider because she is behind Mercury. So she can only be 48 degrees away from the sun in any chart, period. So you'll always see the sun followed by these two lovers. And then, of course, um, we're in the middle of these, of these. And so what we've got behind us is the other planets. That's why we see them going around the zodiac all the time and that they never are following the sun directly. And so when you look at that and you understand what a lemniscate and an analema is, then you will understand how it is that Saturn conjuncts the sun even though Saturn's way, 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 way behind us. And yet how can it be conjunct the sun in a birth chart? Well, because... You know, this is a serpent. This is a long vortex serpent that's flying around. So when you look at the ast astrological chart, I've always encouraged people, don't look at it as a two-dimensional circle. Look at it spiralling inwards and see the first house as the first step and then the rest of the spirals go on into the, into the, the abyss, you know, in, into the vortex. And... and um, and it's so important that uh, we understand this because it's astrophysics, astrology, the Word of God. You can, you, you can look inside of an atom. And in fact, that's what the sun uh, was called, atom. So when you're looking at someone's chart, you're looking inside the atom of jar at the time they were born. And so, you know, there's all science in here. And as I said, once uh, my niece Sonia uh, prepares the... A presentation. We'll get on this show, and uh, we're going to bust the um, what's going on in the DNA, and you'll see exactly as above, so below, as without, so within. And this is why we have to get rid of these baboons who don't know that they're people trafficking, uh, like uh, Robert Doyle, the asshole, um, chief magistrate of Melbourne, and he's allowing my friends uh, Mick Doliar and Kerry Marks to be suffering and perishing in damnation in their little cages because they decided that they'd have a photosynthesis uh, experiment and grow one or two pots of marijuana in their homes beside their bed. And Kerry Marks is in there. Imagine how many pedophiles are lusting over the money by milking those bonds, those birth certificate bonds. I wonder whether that arsehole judge who's put them in... in, um, um, in, in the prison is going to enjoy his time when he goes because we have evidence that he has uh, is a people trafficker and everyone is having themselves 
screwed by being citizens. Your citizenship is worth as much as a piece of toilet paper. You can wipe your ass on that because it is absolutely useless. And you don't just get to die with it in this world. You get to die with it for eternity. So all you citizens, anyone is, is a citizen, uh, you might want to lose that that little uh, that little epithet. That will um, follow you to your to your freaking uh, uh, tombstone, all caps name. But yeah, they'll stamp you with that everywhere you go. The bastards. Rome is ramming it up everybody's backside, good and hard. The fourth captivity. But remember, the first captivity was destroyed, and so was the second, and so was the third. And the fourth one, which is death, the number four, she in Japanese, death, that's come to Rome and all of its little pimps and pawns and maggots like Emilio Mandarino and his pimp master, uh, Robert Doyle, chief magistrate of this here good city of people trafficking Melbourne. Come to Melbourne, uh, folks get caught with a joint and end up in one of their penitentiaries doing time. Uh, these pedophiles, the bar, uh, practicing law, <laughs> practicing how to attorney you over to the devil so that you can pay bail and worship in their demon lust for the Alzebul. You know what I think? I think it's about time we say screw you and go to hell to the temple, tempo, time, crown, chronos. Satan, Satan, the devil um, creature, you know, and uh, put its rest once and for all. Allah, David and Goliath. Right on, Centaur. Yay, yay. I'll drink to that. Hey, and a nice little circle. My... <laughs> you were talking hey, about... Hey, Bindi. Nikan... Yay, hi. I just had a um, a little click. You were talking about Nikan 17, or Nikan 17 a while back, Santos. Well, 17 is an 8, so it's the Romans' infinite love for Nisan 17. They keep screwing. Same circle, over and again. Oh, well. Yeah, uh, exactly. An an yeah, another little tidbit. Two twin goats were born today at a uh, educational farm I do a bit of um, voluntary work for. Um, one male, one female. Huh. You know what the the owner of the farm said? Got to keep them inside till after the 21st, otherwise they'll be stolen and uh, ritually sacrificed. So, Satanism is still alive here. Yes. How are you? Uh. Oh, imagine how many imagine how many rams have been sacrificed at Ram Adan, Ramadan, Ram yeah. Adam, Ma Ma Adin, that is, and at Easter by filthy idiot so-called Christians. And Jews and Islamists. What a bunch of morons. Why don't they just go back and read their documents and realize that they have scientific, god light documents of high, high, high science, which they are too stupid and perfidious to understand by the degeneration of their demented pedophile minds and wake up, hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Santos, Yom Kippur, you know, when you sacrifice the. Uh, the the high priest goes and throws the the Capricorn from the hill. You're not so you're supposed to throw your bones, you know. You get the physicality away. It's Yom Kippur. You need to be an angel. Forget about him. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah, but uh, yep. that reminds me of the scripture. That, you know, they they do things literally. They call themselves Jews. They yeah. call themselves Christians. They call themselves these things, and yet they betray by their works. You shall recognize them by their works. Not everybody saying to me, Lord, Lord, will be saved yeah. in that day. For, Lord, didn't we expel demons and perform wonderful works and witness in your name? Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. And the Apostle Paul condemns the babes and says, You are still on the milk of the Christ, based in doctrines of basic childish milk how can I feed you the higher esoteric food you will choke on it it's like giving a steak to a baby yeah. it's impossible they feed on the literal they're, they're literalists they, they literal, really think literal. that Jehovah wants yeah they, they really think that Jehovah wants us to go kill Indians and, and Canaanites and Jebusites and, and freaking Amorites my yeah. god this is all happening in our blood and, and ammonian, ammonian chloride ammon is in batteries it's electricity, ammonium chloride, sodium, four times, two times uh, in the 
14th chapter of Genesis, there was a war. Abraham and Melchizedek had a war. There were nine kings. And um, Yeah, I wanted to ask in, you about in, that. In the Valley of Siddim. Well, mm-hmm. well, in the next breath, hang on, in the next breath, um, Abraham goes to Sodom, where Lot is. So Sodom and Siddim, it's sodium chloride. And that's why Lot's wife looks back at the filth of the, of the earth and she has to reincarnate and turns into a pill of salt. It's awesome. the sodium chloride, ammonium, and ammonium chloride. It's all in the Bible. It's all alchemy. Hello, wakey wakeys, uh, yep. yeah, church goers. Yeah. Just keep yeah. eating your salty food, you know. I'll have french fries with that salt. I'll have beef with that salt. Sodium chloride. Yep. That's table salt for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. And of course, they're, they're trying to... They they try to make salt um, bad for you. Well, of course it is if you buy it at the shops, where yeah. the filthy pedophile uh, controllers of this world have have, have given um, uh, given us false science so to give us poison. That's poison because it's been heated up so that it can flow out of your little vessels, your golden vessels, so f- um, fluidly. So those crystals now, they've got jagged edges, you see, and they flow now because they don't stick. Salt that hasn't been heated up sticks together, and they don't like that because, it's, oh, we don't want the sticky. We're, we're into cuisine. We want it to flow. So table salt is bad for you, but... But the morons of the left brain will tell you that salt is bad for you and cholesterol is bad for you and all of these filthy, putrid lies. And this is because, um, because it, well, table salt now, sodium chloride, um, which should be sun-dried and natural, which is so beneficial for the human being. The same with <laughs> calcium fluoride, the salt for cancer. Um, uh, sodium uh, Calcium fluoride is good for your teeth. Um, but see, science gives us what? Sodium fluoride. Sodium yeah. silica fluoride. The dipshit. Yeah. It's, and, it's all synthesized it's, version. It's not real. It's all like, sort of the same. Yeah. Analogous, yes. Yeah. Analogs of, of, yeah. of nature. But it's not nature. See, nature comes from N.A., salt. So... You know, it's not nature. It's it's perversity. It, it comes from the mind of perverse, uh, deficient, um, uh, deviant scientists who are capable of persecuting monkeys and rats and rodents in their laboratories and inflict vicious harm and grievous suffering upon animals. And these, they, you know, they've got PhDs on their walls and they kick around in, you know, in nice uh, leather limousines and get funding from the government. This is because the state, which reminds me, um, can anybody, does anybody uh, follow Larkin Rose? And his, he, he put out a 15-minute video, which was a sort of a condensed short version of everything, you know, how upside down the world is. If anybody knows where that is, I'm trying to look for it, send it to me because that's the one I'm going to put in the, on, you know, on the, my top 10 list of videos for my flyer, right? Uh, Larkin Rose, and um, he's really, really nailed it, the way he's um, explained that people in church and in politics, all of that dickhead world stuff that's going on, they just worship a god called the state. That's it. That's how empty these morons are. They worship the state. This is a false idol. And Larkin just busts it really, really nicely. Yeah, that's atheism, yeah. Today, I mean. Yeah, yeah, the sin yeah, of yeah. the universe. To deny your godship. Atheism. Yeah. What a filthy, filthy word. Worse than yeah. prostitution. It's it's filth. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you've and you've got idiots like um what's his name? Um the God delusion guy, you know, who goes condemning the Bible because of all the bloody Jehovah. What a oh, yeah. big fart. Uh, what's his yeah. name? What's that idiot? He's got to be exposed. We've got to shut the yeah, mouth of uh, idiot. Are you talking about Dawkins? Dawkins, right? Yeah, Richard, yeah, uh, yeah. Richard oh, yeah Dawkins. That stupid British guy walking around, God this and God that. What an idiot. Yeah. 
the worst. And, and you've got all these yuppies that follow. You've got all these yuppies, materialistic yuppies, atheist pigs that follow him. You know, bacon eating pigs that go following him, clapping and cheering and buying his books. Yeah, what evolution. A dickhead. Richard He's Dawkins, not even... you're a dick. Absolute what an ass. dick. He's got sorry, nothing. I'm He's sorry. No, right. no, you're right. He, uh, he is. He's just an egotistical left brain piece of shit. And hey, remember this, guys. The false prophets will be everywhere. Oh, they're all Rome's little pedophile pawns sent out to speak oh. and vomit. I've, I've, I've thought about That's this a long time ago. It says clearly in the Bible that they will do miracles. They will control fire. They will do many things that those people do today. I mean... There's nothing miraculous about controlling fire, <laughs> you know, but a gun is controlling fire, you know, firearms, you know, firearm, you know. So, that's your false prophet arms. everywhere. Yeah, arms is an anagram of army, of, um, of Mars, of Mars. That's why, yeah. The, yeah, that's why the Salvation Army is, uh, yeah, looking after people in a very charitable way. Nice people, oh, yeah. those pedophiles. Yeah. I, I I wonder why they let them go uh, both sides every time and and, and conflicts. Uh, it, very interesting, right? Uh, you know, it's because they're good people. Yeah, I'm sure. It's not because they want to oh, make yes. sure their investments are going well. You know, so no, it's not that. Oh look, it's 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 high time to say goodbye to this in the now, in the now, with both, with both, um, you know. Uh, the understanding that this this so-called duality is bo- basically polarity, and to bring it in the middle is to expose the evil and to expose the light at both yep. ends, and that's exactly. what we're doing at this table. Well, yeah, again, you have, you, you got to see the contrast, right? So, uh, and <laughs> that's a with star, right? Uh, with the star of love, we're, you know, flip it around, lexagram, right, guys? It's all in there. Uh, yep. Remember, every, every word can be reshaped. Every letter, every sigil has its own meaning. And depending on where it is and how you sound it out in a word gives it the intent. That's why we have been ruled for so long under their Phoenician or phonics laws. Uh, creation itself is sound. Light is just a higher vibration, higher frequency of sound. You know, uh, And for those that want to hear what that sound is, all you got to do is close your eyes. I've, I've, I've done this before, so try this out. Close your eyes without saying a word or, or shaping it with your mouth or anything. Just think of the word rabbit. Did you hear it? There's the sound of creation right there. Yeah, that's nice. Just like that. That's how we create. That's the universe. That's the spiritual contracts that we that we need to go back through and say, no, I'm not agreeing with anything in this system any longer. Uh, I break all spiritual contacts, all energy going to it. This is where you get to be your own self-imposed uh, suicidal Pinocchio cutting your own strings. The only thing that's keeping us bound here are our agreements. You know, so yeah. it's, t- it's time to stop. Yeah, well, fear is the big one, right? And of course, yep. what is the biggest thing they sell? Uh, not only do they uh, warp all of their religions, they even created a hell uh, to make it even more fearful. So, yep. you know, the, we're we're busting this thing wide open every single night we sit at this table because of the intent that is existing here. And we are changing this paradigm in the now. I, I watch it unfold. It's uh, You guys got to know... Uh, I love watching the power of this collective. It's beautiful. Yeah, just a bunch of spiritual warriors meeting together, you know, doing what we need to do. Exactly. And, uh, guys, we still got about 20, 20, I'd say a little less than 25 minutes here. So uh, whoever wants to jump in, jump in. Let's uh, let's get this wide open. Um, I actually want to recommend... Okay, oh, who I'm was... I'm not sure. It's I like can, saying, I... do you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm just looking at the weather, and I, I, I listen to you guys talking about uh, eating the pig and all kind of thing. Yeah, so I agree, but I, I couldn't jump in at that time. I agree, that's why I decided to become a vegan, because of all the thing what we did to other animals. And they actually pack up for us. So I totally agree with what you say. 
And uh, I'm excited for tomorrow. How are you going to travel to here? <laughs> well, I was thinking of summoning my way up there. Uh, you know, no, I'll, uh, uh, I'll have to give myself a good head start here uh, in order to get there. Uh, the roads should be a whole lot better than they were. I was uh, over three hours uh, getting where I am right now. Uh, yeah, the roads were pretty uh, shitty. That's why I spell snow, S-H-I-T, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and, Kate, come up on my island. I, I'd love to. Hawaii. There's no, uh, there's no traffic lights. One and a half gas station. I don't know, maybe ten cop cars, maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any volcanoes like we can put those ten cop cars in? Um, exactly. By the way, uh, it's it's they pronounce it Hawaii, right? Uh, yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh, in Hebrew, it means uh, in the now, like Jehovah. Just Hawaii. Just you know, in the now. Beautiful, right? That's nice. What yeah. are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Hawaii. Uh, I, I got a good uh, film to recommend uh, everybody. Um, I, I think it's a higher uh, based film. It's like for people who who are in the know. It's um, it's not even allegorical. I I, I want to read you the uh, the. Um, um, how do you say the um, the review that the New York Times gave the movie? It's called um, the movie is called The Sunset Limited. It's a movie shot in one room with two players. That's it. So the the l- listen to the review. The characters are deemed empty vessels for the author's language and notions. <laughs> that sounds like God. Um, so so purely rhetorical and dramatically inert that you never feel as if you are in the room with them. So, Say that beginning again. Uh, the characters are deemed empty vessels for the author's language and notions. Uh, I I wish I was that, you know, for 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 <laughs> the the thing you need to be, you know. So, well, you no, see this film. no shuns, right? You're not shunning anything. You're wide open, <laughs> right? No exactly. shuns. Oh. The characters okay, are we've empty. Got, um, Sorry, guys. We've got Curtis Columbine in, in the chat, and we've only got 20 minutes. It'd be nice to hear the latest from him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me get him into the call here. So when... I, I've done it. Oh, um, absolutely. Then, then uh, did you... Oh, you brought him in. Okay. I'm yep. uh, not seeing him. I see you've added him. Uh, he'll have to rejoin the call then. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, if you're listening, Curtis... You you heard it. I've done the wrong procedure. <laughs> no no no. You added him. He's just got. He, uh, he just didn't answer the phone. Oh. Okay. So let me. Um, yeah. Uh, let me let me just try this again. See if I can. Oh, I can't add him this way. Yeah. My my dra- drag and drop isn't working again. It it, it does little stints of working. Uh, tonight it's not. So uh, just text him back here. I can text him back and just get him to re- just to rejoin the call. Let me just get him in here one sec. Yeah, go ahead while I'm doing this. Go ahead, guys. Hey, Santo, did you get? Uh, All right, somebody else, please. Yeah. No, no, you go ahead first. No, I just wanted Santo. Did you get my um, birth chart info? Um, I think I did. Yeah, which which one? Uh, when and how? Uh, email or? Yeah, remember, I, I gave it to Kate, and she was going to uh, send it on to you. It was 523.69. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty- I, I passed it through on Skype to you. Okay, at, wonderful. Uh, wonderful. That's my- so we'll, we'll get around to that some other time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Absolutely. My pleasure. Anytime, yep. Um, yeah, just let me uh, double-check here, because I know I did. Um, oops. Uh, where did I put it? Okay, I've got to go back. This is a couple of days ago, right? Um, yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> I went back a whole week. Oh, here we go. Uh, May 23rd, 1969, 11.57 a.m. Everett. Is it uh, Maine, Massachusetts, or Montana? Yeah, Mass- Massachusetts. Okay, and, yeah. Kid, I thought you liked this. The county I grew up in was called Middlesex. Oh, what are the odds? Say key, right? <laughs> oh, look at, the, look at the word. Look at the word course. I love the word course. Stay the course. Cor say, the heart of the divine trinity. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can't make this shit up, baby. (laughs) It's just getting funner and funner and funner. And let me, uh, I'm still trying to tag Curtis here. Hang on. Uh, Go ahead, guys. Yeah, I would like to ask Santo. uh, Well, I guess so. I didn't listen to all the show. 
So I just want you to refresh in me uh, the, uh, what that meant, signature. What what this uh, healing meaning for a signature? Um, well, well, there's there's a uh, a silent n in sign in the word sign. So you're sinning. You see, that's the sin number, and they want you to, you know, they're going to hypothecate your signature, but but. Spiritually, what you're doing is you're sinning because you're signing. So it's a spiritual. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay, let's, 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 let's go yeah. deeper, guys. Let's go way deeper, okay? Signet, Cygnus. Cygnus is the divine feminine. This is about capturing the divine feminine creative intent, right? Yeah. Oh, someone's uh, moving house in the background. <laughs> there we go. Just uh, keep uh, keep in mind, guys, that your mics are all open, so uh, we can hear you fart and everything. So just be mindful. Uh, yes, yeah, and then you have the uh, signature, so it's your divine feminine. So uh, again, go back to the phonics, and yeah, you're absolutely right, Santo. Uh, you have this silent G, which makes it sign or sin. Break it up with uh, don't break all the rules of all the letters. You can make an I sound any way you want, and uh, and the G can be silent. It can be uh, with the noise, singing, right? And, and yes, and there's your social insurance number, your sin number. Um, mm -hmm. Goes on and on. Mm-hmm. And, and so on and on. Nature, it's, 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 uh, when we're signing it, anything on the paper, so we are committed sin, isn't it? That's what that meant, signature? It's a sin against nature. It's a signature. Sign, sin, yeah. nature. Nature. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, and Curtis, Curtis is in the call now, by the way, just letting you guys know. Okay. Um, so how about... From now on, I do not sign any document, but I got a, a ter uh, I got a registered general to sign it for me when I okay. am one as a witness. Uh, uh, I like Ping. We're going to have a real good chat tomorrow. I need to get you back on track, okay? So uh, yeah, yeah, save yeah, yeah. all your questions for tomorrow because we're going to be talking one-on-one, -on -one, baby, and we're going to show you how to get this done, right? It's okay. It was a... <laughs> There was a link on your um, Facebook page about how to sign. Did you, did yeah. you see that post? How to oh, sign? Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I went I through it. I, I like the I like the information that's in it. But again, guys, I, exactly. and I'm really I'm gonna I'm gonna get my fluffy out and I'm gonna beat the fuck out of every one of you if you if you keep it physical <laughs> and literal. No, totally seriously, crazy. there's no giggling here. This is a spiritual matter. You are fucking yourself and the rest of us. So stop. I'm gonna cover this tomorrow. Okay. All right, Fluffy's Great. on fire right now because I know the power of what people are doing when they sign things. They are flowing yeah. agreement towards the system that is destroying them. You are cutting your Completely. own throats. Completely. Stop. Please stop. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kurt, Curtis, you're in the call, buddy. Can you hear me? I, uh -oh. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Uh <laughs> I hear you too. <laughs> I, I, got, I got no video, so I, I wasn't sure that I was on. Well, that's good because we don't use video. <laughs> oh, good. Then I. I but well, I'm I know, really cute. I am. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, just wanted to say hi. I got some stuff that we could talk about a little bit later off air because uh, you know it's better that way at least initially. Okay. Well, we got uh, 15 minutes. Anything? Uh, any little tantalizers you can throw there? And uh... yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be in. I'm gonna be in court um, Monday for the first time in years, and I'm gonna be going in as God. Oh, about time. <laughs> no, I, I mean really, like God, and, and and the wrath of God is going to come down on the folks. Oh, that's good. No, I I like that. I'm I'm all in that. So that's uh, kind of what we've been talking about. Time to get that status back, and let's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. What I'm really doing though is they got some shit hanging on my wife, and my wife, and I know most women hate to hear this, but my wife is actually my property, my responsibility uh, under my care. And the thing is, is that the state has made an erroneous claim upon somebody that does not own that property. They, they, they need to get a hold of the husband in this particular case, and they've never done so. So I've got a couple of different avenues I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretty much bury them under. One is um, obviously the fact that the state uh, cannot prove their claim, thus it has to be dismissed for a cause. And the other side is they've never, ever contacted the owner of the property, which is me, um, 
therefore, the, the failure to join or not join her also gives it the boot. So either way, uh, I, can, I can at least protect my wife. And that's the thing is most husbands do not know that they are the 100% owner because they've divided, they've divided the, the marriage contract up. Uh, females do not want their husbands to be in that protective situation because they think it is truly an ownership deal. But, but in a court of law, there's only one person between the husband and wife, only one, and that's the husband. So unless the husband grows some balls and goes in there and protects his wife, the wife is swinging in the wind with the, her other husband called the state. Well, here's where here's where you can take it even further, uh, Curtis. Uh, just a just a little teaser for you. Um, the, the mere fact that these guys are are in office, uh, claiming to be a title of any sort whatsoever, is all the proof of intent that you need uh, to show that they are willfully, knowingly, by commission, aiding and abetting uh, humanity into fraud, and are thus prosecutable on the private common law side through the justice of the peace and the uh, uh, the uniform the robes all of it are proof of intent that's all you need to do is prove the intent a crime is not a crime without intent that's what i was saying last night the difference between murder one and involuntary manslaughter is the intent in in all cases from murder one down to involuntary manslaughter someone dies the only thing that changes the crime is the intent. So everyone that is wearing a uniform, and you might want to bring this up to these guys, because everyone that uses a legal name, asks for a legal name, is actually committing fraud, aiding and abetting another, enticing them into slavery. Now, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure under United States, their code, because they're, they've sworn an oath to their codes, so they are liable to their own code. Those who make the laws must obey the laws. Uh, United States Code Title 18 might have something pretty serious about enticement to slavery, fraud, um, you know, high treason. There's a few other things in there, like all of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, mens rea. Mens rea. Mens rea, exactly. So what, the reason why I'm, I'm, I just want you to have that little seed in, the, in your back pocket, because every action that these individuals do is proof of their intent further. So what they're doing is even by opening their mouth, a cop even open by putting on a uniform under uh, we'll look at Black's Law, usually a law enforcement officer for the purpose of deceiving someone. Yeah, they kind of do that all the time. So the the mere fact that they put the uniform on is all the proof of intent that you need because they have sworn an oath to a dead corporation, and the only way that they can get money for that is to aid and abet the unknowing into criminal acts, uh, therefore keeping us dead. That's how we stay in their jurisdiction. But right. It's, it's a civil conspiracy. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm doing now, and uh, Carl Lentz uh, just just had a successful uh, private prosecution in London, England, no less. He flew to London, England to help a family out. Haven't got all the details yet, but it was uh, in the city of London proper, and it was uh, against a, a town council uh, commissioner. And one, I haven't heard the details, so I'm looking forward. I want to actually get Carl on. Uh, I haven't talked to uh, talked to him in a in a long time. He used to do uh, I don't know if he still does them or not. With um, uh, I used to do webinars, uh, and he I would join occasionally on the Saturday night with him. And uh, what a powerhouse! And look what's happening now, Curtis. Everyone is coming together, and and while everyone is doing their different thing. This ta for this table here, we stay mainly on the spiritual contract side of things to rip away all the, the potential agreements that might interfere with those playing in the physical to move all that shit out of the way. Because, you know, we've all got our skills, we've all got our talents, and people like yourself, um, uh, Carl and, and others, uh, uh, Rob Ryder, prime example of going in there right into the, into the lion's den and kicking the living shit out of them. That's the game I'm after. I'm just getting all that spiritual shit out of your way. Okay. Go play. <laughs> yeah. I'm planning on it. Oh, I know. That's, I can feel your energy. So let's. Uh, I, I just want to make you know, make sure that you got that little tidbit to put in your back pocket to know that they're all liable for intent to commit fraud. And you might want to let them know that. Just saying. Yeah, I, I will. I, I'm going to keep that in my back pocket. In fact, I'll, I'll go do a little research on it, exactly that uh, when I get out of here. 
Yeah, well, we've uh, the, the, we, what we have discovered. You cannot, uh, in terms of the Admiralty Court, you are actually committing fraud by using a legal name. So what we do then is re- we remove the assumption and presumption of Admiralty Court by bringing it in. And the only way you can do this, and here's the other big seed. You might want to write this down because this is going to be the header on everything I write from now on. And on the top of it, we'll read this: I am the witness, motu proprio. Toto genere, which means I am the witness or in the state of knowing, the God knowing, of my own impulse, which is the highest covenant, motu proprio, toto genere, in my full character, which is mind, body, soul. That is the trump of trumps right there. That's the most powerful line I've ever put together. And that will be at the top of everything I ever put out. And the most powerful position you can be, and, and if anyone asks you your name, you just have to tell them, I'm the witness. Because only the witness is, the, the only living being in a courtroom is a witness. That's why you have to subpoena the witness and subpoena the evidence. That's real. That's why only the dead can be summoned. That's why people get summonses, because they're dead in the legal sense. So as a witness, you are in your Toto genre, full character, living, and nothing trespasses witness. Wit means to know, ness means in the state of being. So there you are in your God state. Anyone ask my name? I'm just a witness here. Well, they, they do uh, a bit of magic right off the bat by, by raising the dead, by calling the all rise. Well, yeah, and again, it's like... Uh, there's another one for your back pocket. Just if anyone says, "Are you Curtis Callback?" Just say, uh, "Well, I'm the witness of this matter." <laughs> <laughs> and watch their watch their faces go white because you've just invoked a common law court when you do that. And you obviously can't be a witness against yourself. No, you cannot be a witness against yourself, but you can be a witness for your brother. You must be your brother's witness. And this is where we are witnessing for each other now. We have uh, one lady, Maggie, uh, who, who slam-dunked uh, a foreclosure uh, using some docs of mine and uh, a nice cover letter from Chris. And uh, what she's doing now is going out. Her goal is to stop 50 foreclosures, and she's already got in, got in the way of a few of them. So uh, don't mess with her. <laughs> Not Maggie. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's uh, Maggie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like Ping, and this is why I need you to listen to me tomorrow. I'm going to have a really good talk with you. I need you to be where Maggie is, because you're a powerhouse, Light yeah. Ping. <laughs> yeah. All right? Okay. And um, I, am, I am going to court at, um, uh, in Monday for a private prosecution. And the last time, I, I have a 15 witness with me, so now you, you say that, that so I'm going to remember that when I go to court, the first thing I say is that I am the witness. So I, mean, well, uh, I am going to Okay, you, you're saying pri- yeah. okay, uh, Light Ping, you're saying private prosecution. Did you talk to a justice of the peace? Yes. And uh, it was a justice of the peace that put that forward. No. Or not a judge. No, I'm, I'm, there's big difference here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, we'll talk. We'll talk tomorrow. We've only got like five minutes left here, so we'll talk tomorrow. So I just I need you to clear your mind tonight. I need you out of the legal shit and and any sort of okay. attorney's fees and all the rest of that shit. It's gone. It's done. Okay. <laughs> okay. You want to own these guys, or you want to you want to keep playing the bullshit monkey game? What do you want to do? Of course, I don't want to pay. Okay. Uh, I don't okay. Want to, you know, pay with the bullshit right. monkey game, and I, I, I am... know better now. Then yeah. I'm your new best friend. We're going to talk tomorrow. Okay, hon? That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We're going to play. So I see you at 112. Yeah, I should be there by then. Okay? Yeah. Uh, driving safely, and, and you oh, don't yeah. need to be rushed. You know, just take your time. Oh, no, no. Do you know when I'm going to get there? Exactly when I'm yeah. supposed to. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, good. I don't, I don't work with <laughs> clocks anymore. They just give me a rough estimation. <laughs> I just kind of get there when I... That moment of now, when the scene passes by, I'll be there at that moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kate, can you share how yep. we're the thirteenth? How we are all of the thirteenth shaman again? Oh, thirteenth warrior. Yeah, that's the B to B, right? Um, B capital B is thirteen that has been conjoined, right? So to be the thirteenth warrior means you have to be the Ophiuchus, the I, I heal or the healer. And the only way you become Ophiuchus, thirteenth warrior, is by embodying all twelve zodiacs. That's why Heracles or the the key of Hera, right? Has, had the 12 labors, right? The 12 birthings, if you will. Uh, Jesus and the 12 disciplines. 
Muhammad had the same 12 disciplines. And they're all effectively, uh, I believe Santo Leonardo da Vinci did a nice painting of the Zodiac. Oh, yes. Yeah. Start from the left where Aries begins and go all the way through to Pisces on the right. And you can see all the um, sublim subliminal uh, beauty of uh, artwork that he placed in there. The whole 12 signs of the Zodiac. Yep. Beautiful job. Yeah, you might My know favorite. it better as Last Supper. Yeah. My favorite is the Gemini guy with the two hands. Oh, God, I love that. It's so yeah, obvious, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, uh, totally. And then, of course, the, uh, was it the crab with the, uh, the cancer crab with the knife? <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the Saturn guy uh, looking back, you know, not looking at him. The only guy not looking at Jesus. Oh. Yeah, and the only female in the picture. Well, there's actually two, but uh, more one more feminine than whatever. But is uh, Mary Magdalene Virgo? Yeah, the Virgo. Yep. Yeah. So it's all coincidence. Yeah, well, we got about obviously. two minutes here, guys. So why don't we? Uh, and, and Curtis, please, I need you to jump in on uh, you know these calls, eh? Well, the only problem is right now is I, I don't have access to Skype except through via uh, or via um, a Verizon hotspot. And believe it or not, that one week I was on Skype, it cost me eighty bucks. What? Well, only because of the whatever amount of energy the Skype uses coming in, it uses a lot of gigabytes. Oh, uh, okay. And we went. We only have five, and I never really used that much. But Skype used eight times that amount. That's so unusual because Skype Skype doesn't usually uh, use that much up. I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, it unless unless my sister in law just wants me to pay her whole bill. Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. It's all good. Well, anyway, I just I just letting you know it's uh, it's just good to have you, and uh, I love being on here, man. Yeah, I love it. You know, because we've got so much uh, collectively to share as a team here. And uh, do me a favor, tell Peter to take his dick out of a nut. I've been waiting for him to call me, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Fucking walking penis, that boy. Yeah, I need to exactly that. Exactly. Would you? Tell him he's a walking penis. Tell him Navy Boy needs to talk with the tranny. <laughs> I will. I love him, and I don't know what his issue is. I do. I love him. He's fun. Anyway, it's, it's all good. All right. Well, I just want to say a great big thank you to everybody, and especially Santo for popping in tonight, and everyone else, of course. But uh, how about that for a, a uh, merry crucifixion? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Any last words, guys? Get them in now. You got about uh, thirty seconds. Thank you. And good night, I uh, spread spread the well spread the what I don't know <laughs> you know <laughs> I could go good anywhere time. with that one uh, he just dropped <laughs> out so good timing Sando spread the love baby spread the love hey, hey Kate I like how we all uh, did the F word yesterday <laughs> I know eh oh yeah everybody one great big fuck the system all together now one two three. Fuck this system. System. <laughs> Travel on tomorrow, everybody. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow night. Uh, Chris will be hosting uh, tomorrow night. If I get back in time, I'll be there too. But if not, hey, it's going to be a great night. So everyone jump in and help him out, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Much okay. love, everybody. Bye. <laughs> and, uh, Bye, and love, and peace. Okay. And remember, Bye. you love peace.